football against Texas A&M as the Tigers try to extend the nation's longest home court winning streak. Both teams are on the floor warming up now. We have Auburn Sports Network pregame coverage officially coming up at 7.30 Central Time. But in the meantime, we're just going to have some fun here hanging out and talking some basketball, talking some Auburn gymnastics as well. Darian, first, thanks so much for, for spending some time with us tonight. War Eagle. War Eagle, thank you so much for having me. Darion, you've got a big meet coming up here in, yes. in a couple of nights. C coming off uh, last week was your first home meet. What was it like to be back in front of this Neville Arena crowd? And, and for uh, you can relate to these men's basketball players, student athletes. What is it like to compete when this arena is rocking like it will be tonight and like it was last Friday? It was so special to be back home. I missed it so much. Uh, we had two away meets, and the energy is just not the same uh, how it is in the Auburn Arena. So it was so special. Um, we had, you know, SUNY back in the <laughs> arena, and it was just amazing. It's an amazing team this year, and I was just so excited to be out there, um, have so much support, and I just I love the Auburn family so much. As a freshman, you won a, a share of an NCAA title on vault. Mm -hmm. You're great on bars, too, but floor is what you're – what you go viral for, right? Yes. And, and you're in that, that uh, anchor slot. Mm -hmm. Everything is set up for you, and you always deliver for the fans. How yes. are you able to always come through when, when that spotlight is on you so, so brightly? Well, simply because they always come through for me. They're always, they always have my back. They're always cheering for me. And so knowing that I have that energy and that support, that just helps me deliver. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, it doesn't matter what time it is at night. Sometimes I'm competing at 9. Sometimes mm -hmm. if it's a late meet, it's 10. But mm -hmm. I know that I have that support of the Auburn family, and so that just makes it so much easier to go out and do my job. Talk, if you will, about your career and, and the process of growth that you've gone through since you stepped foot on campus. I mean, you've seen an evolution of this program mm -hmm. in, in your time here at Auburn. Yeah, so this program has changed tremendously in the best way possible. I feel like I'm a part of such a – amazing team right now we had a great team last year and I would say it's a young team it's kind of a mix but it's so cool to be a part of something so different but something so amazing and I'm so glad that I'm able to bring my experience to the table if people were watching NBC this morning or maybe scrolling this afternoon uh, they see they see Hoda Kotob talking about you and yeah. your brother what <laughs> was that like to uh, to have that moment to know that that uh, you're being seen here in Neville Arena but also all around the world it means a lot to me um, to be able to not only share, you know, what God has given me and my gift with the Auburn family, but to others around me. And it, it means so much to me when people comment and say, oh, my gosh, to a little girl that wasn't able to do gymnastics, thank you so much. And mm -hmm. that's something that I'll always carry with me. That's That means so much more to me than a score ever will, mm -hmm. than a 10 ever will, just being able to support and, and spread so much inspiration around the world. How about being a role model mm -hmm. and, and – uh, being a representative for, for young girls who want to do gymnastics and be, and be the next Darion. Yeah, um, it just it means a lot, and I, that's why I do what I do, and I, mm -hmm. that's another reason why I can go out and deliver the way I do on Friday nights because I know that those little girls are watching me. And also, I always think of little Darion, and, you know, how would I feel if I had someone to look up to? Mm -hmm. And so that, that really is just a big factor, and that was another reason why I'm here for this fifth year. Mm -hmm. If you have questions for Darian Goborn, all you have to do is comment. Uh, leave, leave a comment whether you're watching Facebook or YouTube, and we will try to get to those as we can in the time that we have here on the warm-up. Talk, if you would, about some of the people who did influence you and, and, and who uh, sort of lit this passion within you for, for gymnastics. Of course. So um, gymnastics wasn't as big as it was. Like big, big as it is like now when I was when I was sure. younger, but um, I did have we did have Simone Biles. We had all of the USA gymnastics team because they were literally amazing and with everything that they went through and still prospered and did what they did for USA gymnastics. Um, um, Dominique Dolls is really big for me, um, especially having a black gymnast to look up to. That was super important to me, and that's a something that's special to me that I can share um, being at Auburn University. So, You made the decision to come back for the COVID year for your fifth season. Yes. And what went into that decision and how glad are you now that, that you made that, that you get to be on this big stage competing in, in NCAA gymnastics one more time? Absolutely. So we had an amazing season last year. Mm -hmm. And that's so I've never been a part of a team like that. And so I was like, 
I have the opportunity to do this again, I will take it. And I, I want to help lead this team to something even more special because I know that we can do it. And also the rise of NIL, um, mm -hmm. that has been super important to be able sure. to um, gain off of my image is, mm -hmm. has been something really life-changing for, for me. Sure. So being able to um, just expand my platform has been really cool. Big meet coming up uh, about 48 hours from now, North yeah. Carolina State. What will fans see when they, when they tune in on, on, on SEC Network Plus? Um, you'll see a lot of big gymnastics, um, um, a lot of cheering, uh, my Flory team, uh -huh. um, <laughs> just, just some big scores, hopefully, um, and just an amazing night. I was talking to Coach Graber this morning, and he said that teams all over the country want to come in here to yeah. experience what a home meet at Neville Arena is like, yeah. because you don't get that everywhere else you go, and if you... His point was for a visiting team like Arkansas last week, if they could survive this environment, they're really prepared for anything down the road. Agree? Right. right. Um, it's funny you say that because I was talking to my friend earlier today, and she has a couple friends on Arkansas, mm -hmm. and they were saying how they were a little bit nervous because they didn't know, like, the crowd or, like, the gymnastics mm -hmm. and how they would handle that. Mm -hmm. And so it's definitely – not an environment for the week, but it's, it's super fun if you can just be relaxed and just do your job. It's super fun, and we know the Auburn family is loving, and they don't mean any harm. It's just that's just how it is here, and so yeah. it, it's really fun. You don't get the nickname the Gymnasties for on accident, <laughs> You're and, right. you know. I mean, it's um, all right. How much thought goes into the opponent whenever a, a team comes in here to Neville Arena? I mean, I would imagine that you're working on your score, your right. routine. There's a lot of focus on you, and not as much about the specific opponent. Right. So. Our coach Jeff always just teaches us to stay in our bubble. So he doesn't want to—he doesn't even want us to look at our own score because sometimes we we can get underscored and that may affect your mental and then it may affect how you transfer to the next event. So he just wants us to stay in our bubble, um, just focus on what you can do, stay present, and just show up for your team. That's all. We aren't worried about the opponent. We're just worried about how we can maximize our score. You got a 10 last year against Florida. What yeah. was that like? You, you delivered, wait, I keep using that word, you, you performed so many great floor routines, and then finally to have it on that night yeah. to, to tie a team and to set the program record for the score. What was that feeling like? That was amazing because I really was not expecting that 10 because I had did, like, I've done so many floor routines exactly mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> and never gotten 10, mm -hmm. always 9975. So I really was just having fun. It was senior night. Mm -hmm. um, it was just a special night. And so I was like, I'm the last one. Let's have a good time. We were already on a roll. Um, and so I was just like, just do what Darion does. Um, it was electric in here like it always is. And I just delivered. And I, that was my first 10. And I, I truly like couldn't believe it. All right. I, I've made it like eight or nine minutes without asking about the WWE. Yes. <laughs> I, we've got to talk about that before we, before we let you get away. Yeah. You, you, you've signed with them, and would just be curious to know how that came about. Talk about that process and, and sort of what's in store in the future. Yeah, so when I was at Nationals, so what they do is they go around to different sporting events and they scout to see who they would want um, to be the next WWE superstar. That's what they call it. Yeah. And so um, they were scouting at Nationals in Texas, and they saw me on floor, and they were like, I guess they took a liking in me <laughs> um, in my performance. Um, and so they ended up reaching out to my agent at the time and he reached out to me and he wanted to see if I was interested And so we got on a call and we kind of just went through What the next steps would be and you know, I I didn't have anything to lose. So I was just like, you know what? I'll just go with it. And so um, I've done a lot with them um, They've taken me out to see several shows and it's yeah. been super super cool um, And so my next steps will be um, trying out in the summer um, in Orlando and just seeing where that takes me but really I just think I'm going to go for it. Yeah. Sure. All right. We were talking about I was a fan growing up. You you didn't know a whole lot about them until w these recent conversations. Right. What have you, not that this is a plug for their company here, but what have you taken away from those live shows that, that you've been to? And Do you ever give any thought to incorporating any of the, the theatrics that you see there into what you do here at, at Neville Arena? Yeah. Well, the biggest takeaway um, was – it was kind of like similar, like mm -hmm. the crowd and being on a big stage. Mm -hmm. That I was like, that's something that I can get used to um, because I'm used to performing. That's what you do. Yeah, yeah. that's what I do. And I'm like, that would be a cool transition. Um, so I won't have to completely leave that behind. And so that was something that um, really struck me. And I was like, wow, this could be really cool. And the outfits and the fashion. And um, I'm a fashion major, so that's something that stuck out to me as well. All and right. Yeah, so those are two big things. I'm like, I, I really would love this. 
Folks, you have four more chances to catch this generational Auburn athlete here at Neville Arena beginning Friday night. Don't miss it. Do whatever you can to either be tuned in or to be in this arena because it's a show. Yes. Darian, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much. War for Eagle. Me. War Eagle. All right. That's Darian Goborn joining us here on the warm up. We're going to keep things going. We're going to let you get away and, and do whatever you need to do next. And we're going to talk a little bit of men's basketball. Again, if you've got questions or want to talk about tonight's game, you can leave those in the comments section on Facebook or YouTube. And Jeff, this is. Uh, this is a team in Texas A&M that has provided Auburn with some big time battles of late. This is a really critical game as Auburn comes off of a two game road trip where it never trailed. Well, you think about uh, just last year in the SEC tournament, A&M had played the night before and uh, maybe we could, sh while well, we let Darion get away, maybe yeah. we could turn the camera around and show some warm ups. Uh, but I, I thought last year at the SEC championship, SEC basketball tournament, that Auburn had a huge advantage that, that A&M had played the, the night before and that they're going to be they're going to fatigue in the second half and it never happened that yeah. was a, a very well coached and a very well played game by the Aggies and, and if you go back to the to them uh, beating uh, Auburn on senior night three years ago with, with Austin Wiley and Samir Dowdy and, and some players who've been in the final four so obviously this is a team that I know BP uh, and this coaching staff and this basketball team is not overlooking even for a second. It, it is an Auburn team, Jeff, that is playing with so much enthusiasm and so much confidence now coming off that two-game road trip. And they got off to fast starts, and I think that'll be imperative again tonight. Fast starts. Auburn beat Texas A&M at home last season. I think a 14 or 15-point mm -hmm. final margin. Four players in double figures in that game. KD Johnson had a big game mm -hmm. at home here against Texas A&M. Fast starts last week were a key at LSU in South Carolina, and a fast start again will be imperative tonight. No doubt about it. And, and Janai Broom, Wendell Green, they both had amazing games at South Carolina. Yeah. If they can continue to keep that going, then you obviously would like Auburn's chances tonight. BP said, uh, talking to media yesterday, he said, you go into the game and you've got 30 points at halftime. Well, join the club. That's what they give up. Yeah. They, they give up 60 points a game, and he said, obviously, points are going to be at a premium tonight. Can Auburn... Instead of get, getting 60, can Auburn get closer to 70? We have our uh, radio pregame show, and of course we'll just keep the stream going uh, throughout, but it's 7.30 Central Time, the official count of the CBNS Bank Countdown to Tip-Off show. And on that show, of course, we'll give you the SEC Roundup. We will give you a 60-second scout of Texas A&M from Chad Pruitt. Carter Sabera is the subject of our player profile tonight, a, a, a family of Auburn fans. Uh, the Sabera family, so we'll hear from Carter, plus the interview with Bruce Pearl. Coach Sonny Smith is back with us tonight. We're excited about that as well. Uh, Coach Smith has not traveled the last several road trips, but he is back tonight in the house at Neville Arena. That's awesome. Hey, you, you talked, to, uh, I mentioned a little bit about the, the 2019, the Final Four team. Yeah. I got a chance yesterday to sit down for a, for a feature that I'm going to be working on in the next few days. Uh, with Jalen Harper, who nice. is the, the younger brother of Jared Harper. And Jalen was a senior in high school in 2019. And he said he was driving. His dad would let him uh, drive over from Atlanta. And he saw many, many games during that, that yeah. late season run to the Final Four. And then he started out at Florida Gulf Coast, went to Vincennes in Indiana, went to Shelton State, and then he wanted to come back here and, and come back home. And so he is a, a, he's not, not playing, but a vital part of the yeah. scout team, which you know how important that is. Every, they don't learn one offense. Yeah. They learn 30 offenses. Hey. Before every game, they're, they're putting together the scout to give the Tigers a good look at what they'll see. I, I don't take for granted the privilege it's been to travel on, on a few of these road games and fill in for, well, fill in's not even what I'm doing for Coach Smith, but to go on those trips mm -hmm. and serve that role on the broadcast, but one of the things that I think I've gleaned the most from that is an appreciation for that scout team. And the fact that they do, they're learning every other team's offense, and they're not just learning it, not just a cursory knowledge of it, they've got to run it at a high level so that the other guys can practice against it at a high level and get a, a sense of what that's gonna look like. So, I mean, that's why everybody's so thrilled whenever the walk-ons and the scout teamers get a chance to get in the ball game. Sure. You look at Jalen Harper, and it's eerie. It's <laughs> eerie how much he resembles Jared. There's no question those two yeah. are, are brothers. He said they talk very, very often, yeah. uh, multiple times a day, and they're texting, and, and uh, Jared is now playing in Europe. And, uh, and yeah. obviously Jalen is proud of his big brother and what sure. he means to Auburn, and I'm sure 
if Jared Harper were, were tuning in uh, on Facebook from Spain, he would say, I, I'm proud of my, my younger brother as well. But well, yeah, they learned the, they learned the out of bounds plays yeah. and, and the underneath side out of bounds plays. They were, they were working on all of that yesterday uh, just so that the, the Tigers could have a good look at what they're gonna see. Auburn and Texas A&M tonight, tip off at 8.05 Central Time. Uh, the Tigers are on the floor warming up. They're just about to, uh, they may be getting close to wrapping up these warm-ups on the floor as they gather in a, in a, a quick circle and got a few guys doing some drills out on the, uh, out on the low post. We're going to bring in the uh, voice of the Tigers, Andy Burcham, and talk a little bit about what's coming up on the pregame show. Again, a couple of minutes left here on the warm-up. We hope you enjoy the warm-up, by the way. It's a new concept. It's something that we uh, we may or may not do for, for the rest of the season. May do it a few more times this year, uh, but it's uh, something that we hope you'll enjoy and it will add to your experience with, with Auburn basketball from Neville Arena. And if Auburn no gymnastics, and tonight, Aub right? Well, that's true. <laughs> if nothing else, just another way to, to show off the, the tremendous uh, atmosphere inside this building. Again, an hour and a half before tip, the doors open, and 15 minutes later, there wasn't a seat to be found within the, within the jungle tonight. A late 8 o'clock tip will not be keeping anybody away. And uh, how fun was that to talk uh, Auburn gymnastics with Darion Goburn? Oh. She is such a, a crowd pleaser, as anybody who has followed Auburn gymnastics over these past few years knows. I asked her before if they've ever, on like one of her tumbling runs on the floor, if they've ever to attempt to find out how high she gets off off the mat I think we would be shocked yes yeah especially when she does the <laughs> and I was a little surprised that that hadn't been measured right. yeah so I would think that's that's tailor-made yeah she for is, a TV broadcast she is way up there yes <laughs> that's what I was gonna say that was my official <laughs> measure I told her I said you've got some hops she yes. said well the springs help I said no it's your hops. <laughs> yeah very humble yes all right Andy uh what do we expect out of this game this tonight Physical? physical, really physical. All Listen, right. Auburn has played some really physical teams this year. Maybe none more so so far than Mississippi State, but they'll get. It will be a physical basketball game tonight. And I think for, I think one of the keys tonight is defensively and how does Janai Broom handle the physical play on the yeah. low post? Because they're going to try and I'm not going to say they're going to try and beat him up. They're going to try and out physical. Auburn on the inside tonight. It'll be fascinating to watch Janai deal with that because that wasn't a factor on Saturday in South Carolina. No, it wasn't. And, and Janai had the, the physical edge in every one-on-one exactly. -on -one matchup that he had in that game for sure. All right, do you think this is a game where Auburn might see that three-point shot open up a little bit? Texas A&M gives up 34% from beyond the arc. If they're going to pound underneath, does that open it up for the guards along the perimeter? Possibly, possibly, but th that's not that's not Auburn's game. Yeah, no, Auburn, you're right. Auburn typically can find its three-point shot. It's whether Auburn makes the three-point. I, I still think the key is is number four tonight. Yeah. And Wendell Green Jr. Listen, as as he goes, yeah. this Auburn team goes. He is the engine, and typically he's the smallest guy on the floor. Andy, I wanted to ask you about Wendell. I didn't, uh, I didn't travel to Columbia, but just watching the highlights and watching the, uh, on video, it, some of his passes were Unbelievable. just amazing. It, what was it like courtside? It was one of the more eye-popping games I've ever seen from a point guard because you, you can see a guy that's in a rhythm shooting. Well, he was in a rhythm passing the ball yeah. on Saturday. And it was whatever he wanted to do in whatever manner with whatever flair he wanted to do. Now, Auburn will be tested much more tonight than it was Saturday against South Carolina. Texas A&M went to South Carolina and buried the game cut. Remember, Auburn led by 26 yeah. in the first, in the second half, and Carolina cut that lead to 10. Yeah. Head coach wasn't real happy no. when he came over for the post-game show Saturday. Yeah, you and can tell. I was gonna make that point too, that it almost worked, you'd like to think anyway that it worked out perfectly, that you had the lead, you're in control, you win the game comfortably, but there's also a big teaching point at the end of the game. There's an opportunity for no the head coach question. to keep the, the fire going, as a matter of speaking. I, I think he'd have rather not had to have that teaching point <laughs> sure. out of that game, but he certainly had it. All right. Crowd is filing in. We're a little over 40 minutes away from the opening tip. We're going to wrap things up here on the warm-up. We'll turn the camera around, put it back on the floor for the rest of the warm-ups, and 
Uh, what you will hear for the next 10 minutes down the line is our broadcast countdown. This is what our radio affiliates hear leading up to the broadcast so that they know when to, when to start and they're on time and they're synchronized. So that's what you'll hear as you see what's happening on the floor. And then at 7.30 Central Time, we will come back with our CBNS Bank countdown to tip off. Andy, I mentioned it before, we're really glad to have Sonny Smith back in the house tonight as, as color analyst. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're, yeah, always, we're always thrilled to have Sonny with us on the broadcast tonight and um, I, it's going to be a fascinating game tonight guys I mean it's a big 20, game. 28 game win streak on the line yeah Let's try to stay within a game of first place in the SEC on the lot Auburn faces Alabama Texas A&M and Tennessee mm -hmm. yeah. home and away between now and the rest of the conference schedule along with Auburn that's the top four teams in the Southeastern Conference. Yeah. It's all right there. And that's, that's what the BP it, said. It, it is. Hey, it's late it's January. A lot of teams aren't in position. It's right. It is opportunities, position. but it is also a daunting Auburn schedule. I, yeah. I love the attitude for all the talk, of, and it is. And it's a challenging road, and you want that if you're going to be the best. You want to be able to say that you beat the best. For all those difficult road trips that Auburn has coming up over the next six, seven weeks, they got to come here too. <laughs> They got to come here. They're looking at their schedule to go. We got to go to Auburn. We got to go to all these other places, and we got to go to Auburn. Believe it. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks again to Darian Goburn for spending time with us. Andy, thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Jeff, thank you thank as you, always. Brad. Enjoyed for, it. Oh, War Eagle. Eagle. I look forward to hearing the uh, broadcast tonight, fellas. All right. War Eagle, everybody. Today's Auburn broadcast will begin in five minutes.
four minutes till start of broadcast. This broadcast will begin in three minutes. Here's your two minute time check. Mark. Here comes your one minute time check for this Auburn broadcast. Mark. Thirty seconds till broadcast. Mark. Wendell, three ball, yes! It's been moved through in a hole with two hands. Three back. Auburn is top 10 nationally in block shots, field goal defense, and three-point defense. Texas A&M is number two in the SEC in scoring defense. So who will reign supreme tonight as the Tigers and Aggies get ready for the first of two battles in this regular season? Good evening and War Eagle from Neville Arena with eight-time Hall of Fame coach Sonny Smith and Brad Law. I'm Andy Burcham. Last Saturday, Auburn shot an SEC best 50% from the field 
running its win streak to five games with a road victory at South Carolina. As a matter of fact, Auburn won both games last week on the road and never trailed in the game. Texas A&M has played its best ball of the season since the start of SEC play. The Aggies are five and one in the league. Their only loss came at Kentucky last Saturday. Sophomore point guard Wade Taylor the fourth is the engine for A&M. He averages nearly 15 points with nearly three rebounds and four assists per game. The fight in Texas Aggies crashed the boards, leading the SEC with a 9.4 rebounding margin this season. Now, Auburn, Alabama, Tennessee, and A&M are the top four teams in the league. The Tigers face the Crimson Tide, Balls, and Aggies home and away before the end of the regular season. That gauntlet begins tonight with the nation's best 28-game win streak on the line. The CBNS Bank Countdown to Tip-Off starts now. Exclusive pre-game coverage of the Tigers begins now with the CBNS Bank Countdown to Tip-Off. Coming up, analysis, interviews, and a look around college basketball. At CBNS Bank, we've been family, community, and financially strong since we began in 1906. Visit cbsbank.com. Alongside Hall of Fame coach Sonny Smith, here's the voice of the Tigers, Andy Burcham. A late night start as Auburn gets set for Texas A&M. We welcome you to Neville Arena on the campus of Auburn University with eight-time Hall of Fame coach Sonny Smith and Brad Law. I'm Andy Birch. I'm glad to have you with us tonight on the Auburn Sports Network. Well, Auburn has certainly righted the ship since the loss to Georgia in the second uh, conference game of the season. The Tigers bring a five-game win streak into tonight against Texas A&M. But remember this, Texas A&M all-time against Auburn is 13-6, and six, Sonny Smith, Whoa. against the Tigers. This is a very good Texas A&M team. They're playing a very good basketball team. So we're going to see a great game here tonight because every both of these teams are so good in so many areas. And I, I expect to see a great game. First and foremost, though, Sonny, they are very good, both teams, on the defensive side of the ball. Auburn oh. has talked about top ten in three different categories in the country. And Texas A&M just simply brings in the second best conference defense yeah. in the Southeastern Conference. I was thinking, what would I say about that? I think it'll come down to both teams are great defensively. The team that can defend with that fouling, without fouling out and stay, stay in the game, I think will be the team that conquers. And yet, both teams will try to be physical oh, no question. tonight. So how this game is called, if anyone gets into foul trouble, will certainly be a factor here tonight. Uh, I, I would say foul trouble is definitely because this is not a defensive team that's not physical. Both of them are real physical defensively. Both of them have foul problems at times. I think the team with the less fouls might win this game. Auburn will have a Chris Moore available tonight. I don't believe that Chris will start. He is coming back after injuring his right shoulder, his shooting shoulder as it is in the first three minutes of the game at Ole Miss earlier this season. Now, you may notice, uh, and, and during the shoot-around today, he was wearing a mask. Apparently, the first practice back for Chris where he could go full blower, <laughs> he got a shot to the mouth and needed stitches <laughs> as a result of that. So I'm not sure if he will be in a mask tonight or not. He was earlier today, but is available to Auburn. So Auburn adds to the depth. Oh, on yeah. that perimeter and on the inside with a physical basketball player in Chris Moore. He can wear what he wants to if we'll get the old Chris Moore back. <laughs> I can tell you that. He can wear his long johns, and he get the job done for us. Medical report brought to you by East Alabama Health. Need emergency care? Check out the new freestanding emergency department located in the new Auburn Medical Pavilion in the Auburn Research Park. Auburn's game tonight is the final game on this Wednesday of Southeastern Conference basketball. Here to tell you about it, and he doesn't have stitches in his mouth. Here is Bradford T. Law. No, you decided not to get too physical on those two road trips last week with me, Andy. <laughs> right. So we're we're all right. Uh, yep, we're mid. We're at the midpoint of the midweek. Three other games tonight. Three games final last night. Let's get that midweek update for you. From the home of the reigning conference champions, 
to every corner of the SEC. Let's go around the most exciting conference in college basketball. This is the Toyota SEC Report. No matter your destination, Toyota goes with you. Toyota, let's go places. Well, Auburn makes its way onto the floor. The Tigers, one of three ranked teams out of the SEC this week. The Tigers, number 15, Tennessee, number four, Alabama, number two. The Crimson Tide, the lone team that is unbeaten in SEC action, and uh, they will take on Mississippi State over in Tuscaloosa coming up at the top of the hour. As you may hear the fans jeering, Texas A&M coming onto the floor here at Neville Arena. A couple of games that are in progress now. Number four, Tennessee handling Georgia right now as they play in the second half up at Thompson Bowling Arena in Knoxville. Seven and a half minutes to go, and the Volunteers lead the Bulldogs 59-33. to 33. Just a, a complete clobbering. Georgia has turned it over 18 times thus far in the game. And uh, Santiago Vescovi, eight points, seven steals, six rebounds, an all-around game, and Tennessee well on its way to a seventh SEC victory. Florida is well on its way to a fifth conference win. The Gators have uh, played much better since visiting Neville Arena back in late December. Right now, Florida is putting the boots to South Carolina 62-37 to with 10 minutes to go in the second half down in Gainesville. Uh, this has uh, been just a hot shooting game for the Gators. They are shooting 52% from the floor. South Carolina shooting just 32% from the floor. Also, Florida has turned 11 South Carolina turnovers into 11 points, and the Gators have turned it over just three times themselves. So Florida well on its way to a win, 62-39. Gators over the Gamecocks, 10 minutes to go down in Gainesville. Last night in the league, Kentucky smothered Vanderbilt 69-53. Arkansas stifled LSU 60-40. And Missouri outraced Ole Miss 89-77. So your standings with the games in progress as they are now and the games still to come tonight. Alabama at 7-0. Auburn and Tennessee at 6-1. Volunteers on their way to 7-1. Texas A&M has five wins. Aggies are 5-1. Kentucky improved to 5-3. Florida looks to improve to five and three. They're in good shape to do that. Missouri now four and four. Georgia three and three. Vanderbilt three and four. Arkansas three and five. And then South Carolina, Mississippi State, LSU, and Ole Miss with uh, single SEC victories. That's your midweek report in the Southeastern Conference. Here is what's on the menu for the remainder of our pregame coverage tonight. What's on the menu is presented by Whataburger. Head over to your hometown Whataburger for the patty melt. Texas Toast with two beef patties, grilled onions, Monterey Jack cheese, and their famous creamy pepper sauce. It's an all-time favorite made just like you like it. We'll get our 60-second scout of the fighting Texas Aggies. That comes from Chad Pruitt. And then Carter Severa is the subject of tonight's player profile. As always, Andy Burcham's pregame visit with head coach Bruce Pearl, Sonny Smith's keys to the game, starting lineups, and eventually the opening tip that's a little more than 20 minutes away from Neville Arena. Fans continue to file in, and we'll uh, continue from this wonderful place when the CBNS Bank countdown to tip-off continues in a moment. CBNS Bank has a long history of stability and a legacy of serving our community's needs for generations. You could say we know a thing or two about tradition. We've been family, community, and financially strong since we began in 1906. Being a team player is part of our culture. That's why at CBNS Bank, we are proud supporters and huge fans of Auburn basketball. Whoa, Regal, hey! Visit cbsbank.com today. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Thinking of advancing your career with a master's degree in business? If so, consider the graduate degree choices at Auburn University's Herbert College of Business. Ranked among the nation's best, we offer full-time and online programs in finance, supply chain management, information systems, accounting, and business administration. Learn more at harbert.auburn.edu. Did you know the average piece of produce travels 1,500 miles to reach your plate? When you buy local, you shorten your supply chain and reduce fuel emissions to contribute to a more sustainable world. I'm Ellie Watson, the director of Sweet Grown Alabama, a program designed to help you find locally grown products. Visit SweetGrownAlabama.org to search for locally grown produce, meat, honey, and more in your area. How are you the ultimate Auburn fan? Because I got this air horn installed in my throat. Pretty sick, right? Yes. You look really sick. 
What doctor would even do this? Doctor? I do this myself. I mean, I can't swallow whole food, but still. Wait, what? Just gotta plow through it. Hey, can I get a couple of soups up there? Yeah, what about some caramel tea? Don't be that guy. Get a fan card. The smart way to be the ultimate Tigers fan. Just go to auburncards.com. You're listening to Auburn Basketball. Now more of the CBNS Bank Countdown to Tip-Off. Counting you down to Auburn and Texas A&M, 15th-ranked Tigers against the Aggies from Neville Arena. And uh, this broadcast brought to you in part by our friends at Auburn AV. The Auburn Tigers put their trust in Auburn AV every home game for the best fan experience, and so should you. Bring the basketball game home when you have Auburn AV design and install your home entertainment system, all with frustration-free controls. Well, uh, pivotal members of, of this team, they don't see the floor every game, but the walk-ons, the scout teamers, they have to learn all of the opposition's offenses, some of the defensive tendencies, and these guys work hard, and they're an integral part. One of those guys is Carter Sabera out of Mountain Brook High in Birmingham, 6'5", junior guard, scored his first career points last year against Alabama in that blowout win for the Tigers here at Neville Arena. In fact, he scored points 98, 99, and 100 for the Tigers in that game. Carter Sobera, today's player profile with Andy Burcham. Talk about your family and Auburn. I mean, you guys are truly an Auburn family, aren't you? Yeah, we, yeah, we are. Uh, so actually, you know, both my parents went to Auburn. Uh, my older brother went to Auburn. Obviously, I'm at Auburn. My little sisters want to come to Auburn. Um, you know, both my grandparents went to went to Auburn. Uh, aunt and uncles went to Auburn. Yeah, it's, it's, I could go on and on, but, you know, I have a, a very deep Auburn roots. You know, came, came to football, football games growing up. Um, every weekend had season tickets, so definitely grown up in Auburn and, you know, couldn't have been happier with my decision to come here. You would talk about that Mountain Brook team that, that you and and Leor played for. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, you know, sometimes, obviously, it was it was frustrating for me just playing with a bunch of great guys and maybe not getting the minutes I wanted, but, you know, I, I walked away, you know, with so much so much knowledge and experience from that, you know, playing with, with kids who, who were, you know, really good, obviously, Trenton being in the NBA and Colby Jones having a really good year, um, and obviously, you know, playing with Leor now, um, just learning from those, you know, upperclassmen and the guys that are older than me, and you know, using the, you know, what I've learned, obviously, you know, to where I'm at now, um, it was it was amazing. But it was it was an amazing season. That uh, team, by the way, at Mountain Brook won a state championship. Silvera's junior season, they appeared in the title game the next year in his senior campaign. Carter Silvera currently enrolled in the uh, Harvard College of Business last year and the last couple of years named the SEC Academic Honor Roll. Speaking of, by the way, our 60-second scout is presented by the Raymond J. Harbert College of Business. You can accelerate your career, and it's really time to do that with an online MBA from the Harbert College of Business. Learn why they're ranked among the nation's best, harbert.auburn.edu. Texas A&M 13-6, 5-1 in SEC play. Uh, they just had a seven-game winning streak snapped at Kentucky on Saturday. They lost to the Wildcats by nine, but before that had been playing as well as any team in the SEC. They're led by Wade Taylor IV, the six-foot sophomore out of Dallas. He's averaging nearly 15 points, nearly four assists per game. Chad Pruitt gives us a 60-second scout of the fight in Texas Aggies. Well, you know, one of the things you're going to see right away is this is going to be one of the best rebounding teams that we play. Now, we played some good rebounding teams. Mississippi State was fantastic. Kentucky's going to be good later. But this group, uh, one through five, will really, really crash the offensive glass. And so we, if you want to talk about one thing that we've got to do is we've got to be able to control the glass. What do you expect elsewhere about the, 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 miss, the Texas A&M offense? Well, you know, they've got three really good guards. Um, you go back to last year in the SEC tournament, uh, Radford, who we think's better from two than three, hit five three-pointers against us. Uh, Wade Taylor um, at the point guard is the best three-point shooter and is capable of, of going off on any night. But those other two guys are capable as well. What do you expect defensively out of the action? Well, they'll be one of the toughest defensive teams we play. You look at every week they're playing, you know, they, the games are in the 50s or low 60s, you know, so we've got to take advantage of the opportunities we have and keep them off the glass. What makes this team as good defensively? And the one thing they do is they will slow it down. They'll, they'll go from the, their zone press back into man, and so before you know it, you're at 15, 14 seconds on the shot clock and kind of scrambling to get a last-second shot. So we work really, really hard to try to, to score in that transition. Couple of one-loss SEC teams going at it here. It's the Tigers and the Aggies. StubHub, 
is the easiest way to experience every Tigers game. Hard to get a ticket here at Neville Arena. Sometimes a lot easier and cheaper to get tickets to watch the Tigers play on the road. But with StubHub, check the virtual view, score your seats, get your tickets delivered instantly. StubHub is the official ticketing partner of Auburn Athletics. StubHub, be there. When we come back, Andy Burcham sits down with head coach Bruce Pearl. This is the Auburn Sports Network. Tiger Talk has been Auburn's weekly coaches show for over 30 years. Join Bruce Pearl and other Auburn coaches every Thursday night at 6 Central. Send questions by tweeting at AU Sports Network or by emailing aubtigertalk at gmail.com. Tiger Talk is presented by Alpha Insurance. Don't miss Tiger Talk, Thursdays at 6 Central, only on the Auburn Sports Network. Are you looking to advance your career without putting your life on hold? Consider the flexibility of an online MBA at Auburn University's Harvard College of Business. Ranked among the nation's best by U.S. News and World Report, our 100% online MBA program provides the flexibility you need to pursue a degree while maintaining your personal and professional life. Learn more at harvard.auburn.edu. In 1925, Modelo began brewing beer for those who believe in better. A model beer, steeped in the tradition of tireless effort. A rich, Pilsner-style lager for those who wear their heart and heritage on their rolled-up sleeve. Since our first batch to every bottle raised today, we've proved that it doesn't matter where you come from. It matters what you're made of. Modelo Especial, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. Drink responsibly. Beer imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. It takes hard work to be the best in the game. Planning, commitment, resilience, sweat. That's why Old Dominion Freight Line, the number one national LTL carrier for quality, works hard to be the best in the game and is proud to support those striving to be the best in theirs. Old Dominion Freight Line, official freight carrier of Auburn Athletics, helping the world keep promising. Ford presents our exclusive pre-game visit with head coach Bruce Pearl. At Auburn, we revere our traditions. Ford has a tradition, too, building trucks that are smart, dependable, and built Ford tough. That's why Ford F-150 is the official truck of the Auburn Tigers. Here's Andy Burcham with Coach Pearl. Understood you gave some pizzas away to the jungle earlier tonight. Man, what a great, they were all lined up. They were fired up. It was a little chilly out there tonight. Nothing like a little hot pizza on a cold night. And, um, man, Andy, I'm so grateful for the, the support that we get from our fans and from the student body. And, uh, you know, man, I saw the environment here on Friday night for the gymnastics meet, the energy in the building. And, and obviously tonight we're going to need it all because we're playing against a a really, really good Texas A&T. You know, I believe one of the top four teams in our league. And they are in the top four. Auburn, Tennessee, Alabama, Texas A&M. And wouldn't you know it, you get all three of these teams home and away before the end of this regular season. Yeah, I don't know why I pissed off at the scheduling department, but <laughs> to get, you know, um, to get probably the toughest schedule in the league, uh, ha having all, you know, those teams. But look, they're all good. They're opportunities. They're opportunities to get better, opportunities to improve your resume. You know, and our biggest challenge tonight is just handling Texas A&M's physicality. You know, the, you know, this team is better than one we that beat us at the end of the year last year. They're they're deeper. Uh, they got a couple of new pieces. They're 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 one of the most athletic teams in the league, but they're also very skilled. And so, keeping them out of the lane, keeping them in front of us is going to be our greatest. And then keep off the boards is going to be our greatest challenge. Come off of two straight wins on the road, in which you did not allow the opponent to take a lead at all in either of the games at LSU in South Carolina? Well, the win on the road, you got to play well early. Um, you know, we, we've been fortunate in, in, you know, in, in our last three road contests, having played Ole Miss, LSU, and South Carolina. Those three teams are going to finish in the lower half of the league. And so we've done, we did what we're supposed to do. And, and, and look, it's not easy to, to go on the road and win this league. But I give the kids a lot of credit um, for, for, you know, and that's my job as a coach, to ask them to do what they're capable of doing. And we're capable of going on the road and beating those teams. Now tonight, we're going to have to play probably our best game of the year so far um, to beat these guys. We did that against Arkansas when we were home. That's, you know, Arkansas was probably 
you know, the best team we played, um, this team's, you know, this team is better than Arkansas. And, and so we'll, we'll see, you know, what step up ability we have. They do a lot of switching defensively. Uh, that, 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 that is very, very unusual, di very different. You don't see it all the time. And, and, um, and, and it's bothered some teams. Uh, they're giving up 60 points a game, 30 a half. So uh, uh, pr points can be precious and few. Will they, s will they change defenses in the same half court set? Uh, yeah, a little bit of man to zone. Uh, they'll do some trapping. I'm certain uh, they're going to devise a game plan and not Wendell Gre not let Wendell Green beat us, beat him because Wendell's been terrific. I'm sure they'll be trapping him more than they trap most people, and we'll have to do a good job of of getting off the ball and 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 putting the ball in some other guys' hands to be able to make some plays, you know. And once again, taking care of the ball, you know, getting good, getting good, uh, not turning it over, and then getting good passes to the perimeter. We're going to have guys open on the perimeter for shots. But if we can give them good passes on time and on target, get those balls in their shooting pockets, we'll shoot a better percentage, and we're going to have to make some shots tonight for sure. What do you see out of A&M from an offensive standpoint tonight? Coach, because defense is the calling card to be sure. Yeah, but, you know, they, they really they'd really drive it to the basket. They're better from two than three. Um, we'll do what we can to keep them in front of us. Um, uh, and, 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 but we've got to make this team beat us from the three-point line. They're, the, right now, that's the only real weakness that I see in this Texas A&M ball club. They're making five a game in league play and shooting just 30% in league play. Now, that doesn't mean they're not, you know, they got some guys that are really capable that historically have shot the ball much better. But right now, that's just what they're not doing. And so then we've got to get them to take those contested long shots, contested jump shots, not foul them. They shoot a lot of free throws. They power the ball inside pretty good. They get to the rim pretty good. Their guards go to the line a lot. Um, and, then, and, then, and then limit them to one shot. That's going to wind up being the key to the game. You've talked about how this Auburn team must play physical. We saw it against Mississippi State a couple of weeks ago. What is the key to Auburn being effective and physical? Well, just everybody doing their job. You know, everybody's got to do their job. You got to increase your umbrella. You got to hit and hold and 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 understand that they're not going to stop on the first contact. Uh, and they, they will flat out jump over Sandy. They got big, big guards that are going to try to line our smaller guards up and drive it downhill. Uh, we're going to have to challenge shots at the rim without fouling. Get backside rebounding. You know, get out and run, and, and um, you know, uh, Coach Flanagan, Coach Pruitt have got the scout. They've got a good game plan together, and, and, um, and you know, it's, it's, uh, it, it's a great opportunity because this is the Texas A&M team that at the end of the day, when we start counting how many get in the tournament, this is going to be one of those teams that it's going to be Texas A&M or, or Auburn or Florida or, uh, you know, Kentucky or whoever it's going to be. And so – Got to take care of business against the people that you're up against for the NCAA tournament, and AM certainly is one of those teams. All the best tonight, War Eagle. War Eagle. Hey, this is head coach Bruce Pearl. Here at Auburn, we revere our traditions, but it's the tradition of hard work that really speaks to me. It's about improving your game every single day and being the best that you can be. In the truck game, Ford has a tradition too, a relentless commitment to building smarter, tougher, and more dependable trucks. That's why I drive Ford F-150, the official truck of the Auburn Tigers. Learn more at buyfordnow.com. Not all models, trims, or features may be available. Contact your dealer for more information. You've got advanced prostate cancer, but you're not waiting around. You want straight talk to facts about a Govix. Or Govix Religolix, 120 milligram prescription tablets is a treatment for adults with advanced prostate cancer. Fact. Orgovix is a different kind of androgen deprivation therapy treatment, a pill, not an injection. Orgovix may cause serious side effects, including a heart condition called QT prolongation. Tell your doctor right away if you feel dizzy, faint, have a racing or pounding heart or chest pain. Orgovix can cause harm to an unborn baby or miscarriage. Use birth control during treatment and for two weeks after Orgovix treatment. The most common side effects include hot flushes, increased blood sugar and blood fat levels, muscle and joint pain. Decreased blood hemoglobin levels, increased liver enzymes, tiredness, constipation, and diarrhea. Other side effects include weight gain, decreased sex drive, and erectile function problems. Or Govix may cause infertility. Talk to your doctor if infertility is a concern for you. Go with a Govix. Ask your doctor. For more facts, visit GoWithTheFacts.com. Kia of Auburn is happy to connect the Kia brand to the Auburn fans. Our winning lineup has something for everyone at almost any budget. SUVs like the Telluride, Sorento, and Sportage. You prefer a sedan? Check out the Rio, Forte, Soul, or the Sporty Stinger. And don't forget our new multi-purpose vehicles, the Carnival, or our amazing hybrid or electric vehicles. Kia of Auburn is a proud supporter of Auburn Athletics. Kia of Auburn, where you're always number one. Whoa, Rico. 
You're listening to Auburn Basketball. Now more of the CBNS Bank Countdown to Tip-Off. All right, we are really getting close now, under 10 minutes from tip-off between Auburn and Texas A&M. Let's talk it over with Hall of Fame coach Sonny Smith. His keys to the game are presented by Kia of Auburn, where you're always number one. Coach on the inside, Texas A&M, they're big guys, both 245 pounds. They're going to try to use that weight advantage yes. to, to, to help them tonight. They're going to use the weight advantage to their advantage. They're going to try to. What must Jalen Williams, Dylan Cardwell, Jani Broom do to get the upper hand? Defense without fouling. Get, keep them off the board. Do not let them get first shots, second shots. And I, I think that'll be enough. Just stay out of foul trouble is the main thing. Keep them out of the lane on the dri dri dribble. I can't even talk tonight. <laughs> I'm, I'm fired up. We, we should probably expect a defensive advantage from Texas A&M yeah. because they're more of a defensive-oriented team. And in the first half, Auburn is shooting in front of the Texas A&M bench. So the communication from the bench to the A&M players will be stronger in the first half. That means it's imperative for Auburn to get off to a, the best start that oh, it can. Oh, yeah. A quick start is so very important. One thing here is they, they'll slow the game down. That makes them look better defensively because they don't have to play as much. And But, hey, we're going to run, and we're still going to play as good a defense they do if we can keep them out of the lane on the dribble. Can you tire out guards that are known for hounding you defensively by – just running them around. More motion without the ball maybe than yeah. we're used to seeing. Wear them down. Really, a lot of that depends on how long you play them. Yeah. I notice that their minutes are very similar to our starters and our first three players. So I think tiring them out would really be a good factor. Although about half of Auburn shots come in the first 10 seconds of the shot clock. The Tigers really like to go fast. Do you expect to see Auburn try to push that tempo a little faster tonight yeah. or dial it back? No, I think we could, we should go after them. I don't, I don't think they're going to take slow the game down. We don't want to make it any slower. All right, good stuff, Coach. We look forward to, uh, to your call with the voice of the Tigers here in just a little while. Listen, just because the weather's getting chilly again doesn't mean Alabama farmers aren't busy growing high-quality products. Visit SweetGrownAlabama.org. Make your next Tigers watch party a slam dunk. Find farm fresh greens, meats, and more at SweetGrownAlabama.org. Hey, folks, it's almost time for Auburn basketball. Tigers and Aggies coming up next. Starting lineups in the opening tip. This is the Auburn Sports Network. From Auburn to Corvallis to Omaha, the Tigers are going to the College World Series. February 17th, the Tigers return to the Diamond. Comes where? He makes the catch going to his knees. Makes his clearing double by Cole Foster. This is your home for Auburn baseball. That one sails into the night and over the wall. He struck him out swinging. A complete game victory for Joseph Gonzalez. The Auburn Sports Network. And we're back with breaking news. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever. That's right, Jim. Coke Zero Sugar is a must-try for any Coke fan, so make sure you... Jim. Ha-ha, <laughs> Jim. We're on the air. Ooh, yes, this tastes like the best Coke ever to me. Your thoughts, Jen? Well, can I have a sip? <laughs> Jen, we're in the middle of reporting the news. I need to try it first. We always picture the SEC student-athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility. But it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. CBNS Bank has a long history of stability and a legacy of serving our community's needs for generations. You could say we know a thing or two about tradition. We've been family, community, and financially strong since we began in 1906. Being a team player is part of our culture. That's why at CBNS Bank, we are proud supporters and huge fans of Auburn basketball. Whoa, Regal, hey! Visit cbsbank.com today. Member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender.
This is Auburn basketball, and these are the Yellowwood starting lineups for the Tigers. Drives to the hole, gets a guy in the air, goes up, and makes the shot with a foul on the play. Three ball, Zep Jasper. Yes! Oh, Zep for three! Zep Jasper, senior, Augusta, Georgia, Lucy C. Laney High School. Went to the hole off the glass, got it at the buzzer! Went to pops along three, got it! Get his autograph he keeps playing like this. Wendell Green Jr., Jr., Detroit, Michigan, Lalamere High School. 19-footer switch. It was a three. Flanagan, four, three, bang. I had Flanagan to the hole with the left hand hammer. Alan Flanagan, senior, Little Rock, Arkansas, Park View High. Cross court, right wing, Williams, three. Got it. It's a steal. Jalen Williams on a breakaway. Left hand hammer. Jalen into the three. Got it. Jalen Williams, senior, May Hunter, Georgia. Bramley County High School. Inside the arc, put it up underneath for Broom. To the hole and in. Broom behind the defense, puts it in. Underneath, Broom with a double hand stuff. And now Broom, sophomore, Grand City, Florida, Ken McCaffrey. Introducing the first stain worthy of a yellow tag. From the makers of Yellowwood brand pressure treated pine comes Yellowwood Protector. After all, if it's good enough to earn that little yellow tag, then it's the perfect finish for your five star backyard. Auburn is 16 and three overall, six and one in the SEC, ranked number 15th in the AP poll, 16th in the coaches, 23rd in the NCAA net, 19 in the Ken Palm rankings. Bruce Pearl, ninth year at Auburn, a record of 182 and 101, 28th season overall, a record of 644 and 246. Before the starting lineups for AM, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Auburn Sports Network. Texas A&M 13 and six overall and five and one in the SEC. Buzz Williams out of Oklahoma City University in his fourth season in College Station. His record is 63 and 42. 16th season overall, a record of 315 and 198. Wade Taylor, the fourth runs the point. Six foot sophomore from Dallas, Texas. 14.8 points, 2.8 rebounds, 3.8 assists. Dexter Dennis on one wing. 6'5 grad student from Baker, Louisiana. Eight and a half points, 5.7 rebounds. Tyrese Radford on the other wing, a 6'2 senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. 12.7 points, 5.2 rebounds. On the inside, Henry Coleman III, a 6'8 junior from Richmond, Virginia. 9.8 points, 5.8 rebounds. And Julius Marble, a 6'9, 245 pound junior from Dallas Jesuit High School in Dallas, a transfer from Michigan State, averaging 10 points. 4.1 rebounds per game. AM at one time was ranked this season, not currently ranked in either the AP or coaches polls, but number 15 in the NCAA net, 48 in the Ken Palm rankings. It is a sellout tonight. Folks have waited a long time for this one tonight. Final game on this Wednesday of Southeastern Conference basketball. Tonight's officials are Joe Lindsay, Chuck Jones, and Michael Roberts. Auburn in the home white uniforms tonight, top sand bottoms with the blue numerals and lettering and the orange trim. Texas A&M in all black top sand bottoms tonight with white numerals and lettering and the maroon trim. This starts as tough a stretch as you're gonna find in Southeastern Conference basketball for Auburn tonight. And when I say that, this is what I mean. Auburn plays Texas A&M, Alabama, and Tennessee twice before the end of the regular season. Along with Auburn, that's your top four teams in the Southeastern Conference going into play tonight. No question. Big thing is protect your home court. That's the big thing. That's what's facing us tonight. Let's get that done. Auburn has won 28 consecutive games here at Neville Arena. It is the longest home court winning streak currently in the country. Auburn went to number one in the country with Gonzaga's loss at home to Loyola Marymount last week. And as this game is about to begin, both head coaches, Buzz Williams for AM and Bruce Pearl for Auburn, are meeting Joe Lindsay at midcourt on the other side from us. I bet it's not a family reunion. What do you think? <laughs> You don't think they're they're exchanging recipes over there? I don't think that. 
It, it beat, beat a little poison dropped in there on a couple of diets. They're smiling right now. I don't know. That's, I, that's very interesting. I, I have no idea what that conversation was. Well, it wasn't about clothing because they, they were in all those suits. That's right. They're dressed up for this thing. Auburn wins the tap. We're underway at Neville Arena. Tigers to the basket to our left. To open things up, Wendell Green Jr. across midcourt. Looks to the right. Instead throws left side. Williams underneath. Great pass. Broom off the glass. He missed it. They're playing man for man. We got a good look by throwing it inside. Tyrese Radford up the floor to the free throw line. Back out to the top. Marble from 17. Buries it. We cannot let their trailers hurt, especially when they're inside the three-point line and get, get an open shots. They press Auburn in the backcourt. Williams to Wendell Green Jr. across midcourt. 2 nothing. Texas A&M. Wendell Green approaches. Dexter Dennis gets double team. Bounce pass for Williams. Back to Wendell at the top. Looked at a three, didn't take it. Shot clock at nine. Wendell backs it up. Down to seven. Between the legs dribble. Three ball left wing. Got it! Right, little guy versus big guy, little guy wins. Great, Great footwork. 3-2 Auburn, 19 minutes to go in the first half of play. Wade Taylor the fourth, working on Zep Jasper across midcourt. Gets a screen from Coleman, drives to the hole, put it up. It was blocked by Williams. Rebounded by Flanagan up the middle of the floor. Auburn on the break, left wing, Jalen, head fake at three. Underneath, Broom with the oh. left hand, puts it in. Great passing by the Tigers, drive it and drop it. We can hurt them like that. 5-0 run by Auburn, Tigers up 5-2, 18-34 to go in the first half of play. It's Radford up the floor. Loves to go left. Pulls it up on the right wing. Switches to the left hand, gets it top of the circle, Coleman. Now Radford, down the lane. To the basket, put it up. It was blocked and out of bounds off of AM ball, Auburn ball. Our, it looks like our defense is to stay between them and the basket. Don't overplay anybody. Keep them out of the lane on the dribble. Auburn top 10 in block shots, three point field goals, and regular field goals in the country. Auburn already has a couple blocks tonight. Williams across midcourt. Wendell Green penetrates left corner. Zip three ball. Yes! They're trapping three-quarter court with a 1-3-1 one, one type trap, dropping into man. We're getting a wide open shot. 8-2 Auburn. Taylor, top of the circle, Coleman. Coleman off the left wing for Radford. There's a steal. Wendell Green on a drive. For Flanagan with the flush. Boy, oh, we're off to a great Ooh. start. Sharing the ball, getting a timeout. Timeout AM. 10-0 run Auburn. 17.41 to go in the first half, and the Tigers lead 10 toes. My goodness. AM knocked home its first shot. Auburn has run off 10 consecutive points. And this looks like Saturday at South Carolina. Remember, Auburn was up 9 2 and forced Carolina into its first field goal or first timeout of the game. At the 17.41 mark, Auburn leads AM by a score of 10 to 2. What's well, the big thing right now is they're picking us up at midcourt and trying to push us to one side, kind of a trap thing. We're beating those things and getting into the lane and making moves, and I hope we can keep that up. Buzz Williams called the 32nd timeout. Auburn up 10 2. Tigers are 4 of 5 from the field. They've hit their last four field goals. AM 1 of 3 from the field. To open this ball game. Yeah, they want to play a half court game. We want to play a full court game. We'll see how this works for both teams. Auburn starters, Green, Jasper, Flanagan, Williams, Broom. AM basketball, Taylor, Dennis, Radford, Coleman, Marble. And it's Radford who hit five threes against Auburn in the SEC tournament a year ago on the left wing. Gets a screen, pops a three, and he made it. Uh, he can hit that. He's a big, tall guard, hard to defend. We're having to defend him with smaller people, but we'll be quicker. They extend their press a bit. Auburn breaks it. Williams gets out of a double team. Wendell Green, head fake at three to the free throw line. Now backs up into the center circle. 18 to shoot for Auburn. Tigers up 10-5. Auburn ball, Green. Bounce pass, Broom. Left wing, Zep. Three ball. No. Long rebound on the weak side to AM up the left sideline. It's Radford on the wing in front of the Auburn bench. 
They'll take time now off the clock if they can. Radford at the free throw line, step back three, ball didn't get it, he's fouled by Wendell Green. And we'll see if that's a three point shot. Well, there's a foul after the shot left, so I don't know how they're gonna call that. What'd they call? They called a three point shot. They did, yeah. No matter when it left your hand, if you foul a guy in, the, in a shot attempt. Here's one thing the officials need to watch. Coleman on his high post screens. He's moving the whole time. Yeah, and he also could block out the sun. He's about nine foot tall. He is a big, big dude. All right, Radford at the line. This team, A&M, well, <laughs> they had made 23 consecutive free throws until that miss by Tyrese Radford. 82% yeah. free throw shooter in Radford. Yeah. There's 75% coming in as a team. Well, he's a guy, he's a guy that does a job. He's a big, big guard, and you have to defend him with smaller people, and that sometimes hurts him. Transfer from Virginia Tech, originally out of Baton Rouge. He made the second free throw. Auburn's lead 10-6. Left-handed shooter from McKinley High School. Really good offensive rebound. Almost two offensive rebounds per game. And he knocks and home the second of the three shots. He's pretty high in the league in number of free throws made, I can tell you that. You can see why. 10-7 Auburn, Tigers break the press. At the top, Williams, head fake left. Underneath, Brew puts it in They're Jalen really, Williams. They're really extending their defense. That means the post is gonna be open. If we can get it in there. 12-7 Auburn, 16 and a half to go, first half of play. Radford looks to the top for Taylor, instead brings it between the circles. Left wing for Dennis, penetrates, falls down, keeps the basketball underneath for Coleman, who puts it in from the left side. They're big, strong people. If we play behind them, it gives them some kind of advantage. We got a stoppage here, what's this? I'm not sure, Bruce Pearl wanted a travel in the worst way when Dennis went down, didn't get it. I think something was said by the two teams coming up the floor. They're, uh, they're picking us up full court just to slow the game down. 12-9 Auburn, Wendell Green, 19-footer right wing. No, he's fouled by Dennis. That'll be a two-shot foul. His foot was on the line. A lot of, what, what happened here, timeout? Yep, timeout on the floor. Wendell Green shoots free throws when we come back. Well, I thought it was a timeout. It isn't a timeout, my mistake. Well, what's going on here? We, we're yeah, 16.03, there's still three seconds left until we get to our first timeout. They may look to make sure that it was a tooth chop foul for Wendell, not a three. I was watching him. His foot was squarely on the line when he took the shot. I think they want to make sure of that right now. And yeah. it is a two-shot foul. I would deny it if I were Wendell. I'd say I was behind that line. Well, of course you would. <laughs> Honesty, honesty would not be my policy in that situation. Ever? Hey, they are big, <laughs> ever. Yeah, they are. Hey, they are big. They're strong. We don't want this to be a half-court game. We want to make them run and catch us. They're, they're big and physical, to be sure. Wendell Green Jr. at the free throw line for Auburn. No one has more free throws made this season in the SEC than Wendell Green Jr. His first free throw was missed. This is going to be a physical game. We want to make sure we stay out of foul trouble. Wendell leads the SEC with 92 made of free throws this season. Had a free throw string snapped at 23, or excuse me, at 25 last week at South Carolina. And he starts the next right. string of free throws made with one there. They break the press. Radford right wing. Drives baseline, gets cut off. Brings it out. Top of the circle for Taylor. Tigers up 13-9. A&M ball. Taylor tries to drive against KD Johnson. And he walked. KD called it. Then the officials called it. And we've got a timeout on the floor. 15-50 to go in the first. Auburn ball when we return to Neville Arena. Tigers 13. Texas A&M 9. Stay tuned. Auburn basketball continues in a moment. What widens the eyes, tightens the stomach, and flutters the heart. Adrenaline. 
Feel it for yourself in the Toyota RAV4, Camry, Corolla, and Tacoma. Get 2.9% APR for 36 months on a new 2023 Toyota RAV4. Toyota, let's go places. Offer valid through January 31st, 2023. Zero down for well-qualified buyers with approved credit and financing through Southeast Toyota Finance. 2904-month commitment for every $1,000 finance. Excludes tax, tag, registration, title, and duty fees. See dealer for details. The passion, the tradition, the rivalries. Sirius XM is your destination for all things college sports, and we've got your school covered. On SEC Radio, there's complete coverage of every school in the conference, including live games, plus 24-7 talk and analysis. So cheer along online or on the Sirius XM app and listen to your favorite team anywhere. And now, as a college student, you can stream your first three months of Sirius XM for $1. Fees and taxes apply. See offer details and subscribe now at SiriusXM.com slash SEC Sports. Hello there, my name is Seychelle, and what makes the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich original to me is the punch of flavors that's unlike any other. You get the crispy tenderness of the chicken and that hint of sourness from the pickles. (laughs) Ta-da! Hey, I'm Juan, and what makes the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich original to me is you know you're going to get chicken that's crispy, golden, and juicy. This is the gold standard of chicken sandwiches. Order the original Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich on the Chick-fil-A app today. Real customers paid for their testimonials. Follow the Tigers on Twitter at AuburnMBB. Now, back to the game. Welcome back to Neville Arena. 1550 to go in the first half. Auburn 13, a and 9, Auburn ball Coming out of the timeout break, first half presented by Southern Union. Conveniently located just a few miles from Auburn, Southern Union offers classes that easily transfer to the university. Endless opportunities are right up the road. Both teams are shooting well in the first half. Auburn five of seven from the field at 71.4%. AM three of five from the field at 60%. And the teams have been combined to go three of four from the three point strike. Early on, Auburn ball coming out of the timeout break. What have, what have you seen early on from Auburn, Sonny, from a defensive standpoint so far? Well, we're trying to keep them out of the middle on the drive, and we're doing a pretty good job of that. And I think we'll keep that up. And also, we're playing in front of them. as no denying, trying to steal. We want to stay out of foul trouble, and I think that's keep them down to one shot and keep them out of the lanes what we're trying to do Auburn offensively though when it gets the opportunity it's getting out and it's going they're gonna run we should you sh- we should make them play on the run all the time because right. they're a half-court basketball team defensively and offensively good to see Chris Moore on the floor for Auburn first time he's been out there in four games since that shoulder injury in the first three minutes at Ole Miss and he checks in to the lineup for the Tigers at the four for Auburn tonight. Yeah, he's playing the four tonight. He started all season at the three, but Alan Flanagan's played pretty well there since the injury. Auburn ball up 13-9. Green, Johnson, top of the circle, Moore. Left side, Johnson, Flanagan to Moore. Back to Flanagan, left side of the circle. Inside the arc to the free throw line. Now to Chris, penetrates to the hole. Wrap around intended for Cardwell, it didn't get there. Yeah, and that was with the Cardinals fall. Up the floor, Wade Taylor, the fourth, the leading scorer for AM. Left wing for Dennis, hit fake at three. Now back out to the top for Taylor. 19 to shoot for AM. AM ball, free throw line, marble. Left wing, Dennis, three. No good. Rebound, AM. Back up, Coleman missed it. Rebound tapped up, missed it again. Out of bounds off AM, Auburn ball. Now, one thing is showing here is they're hitting the offensive board with three people. We're going to have to keep them off the board and keep not let them get second shots. That's going to be a big part of their offense. Tiger ball leading 13-9, 15-03, first half. Wendell at the sideline, Flanagan to the top for Moore. Now Flanagan on the wing, wrap around Moore at the top. Left wing, KD Johnson three. Long rebound, KD ran it down. Underneath intended for Cardwell and off of AM. Auburn ball with 18 to shoot. Nice KD job Johnson. By KD to follow his shot. KD Johnson playing aggressively. He, he's, uh, he's much, much better when he plays aggressively. Trey Donaldson checks in for Auburn at the point. Replacing Wendell Green. Auburn looking for an inbound. Has to call a timeout. I've seen more holes in a wrestling match than I've seen in this thing. Everybody, you make a cut into the lane, they got hands all over you. 30-second timeout called by Auburn with 14.50 to go in the first half. And Auburn on top by a score of 13 to 9. Andy Bertram, along with Hall of Fame coach Sonny Smith, Brad Law with you from a sold out Auburn Arena, Neville Arena. Oh, it is some kind of sight. 
Beautiful yes, it is, crowd, it? <laughs> crowd into the game. Official showed up, having a good night. Much to your dismay, I'm sure. <laughs> a real quick on the scoreboard, let's go to Brad Law. <laughs> All right, Andy, yeah, Yellowwood scoreboard, three other SEC games. Mississippi State leads number two Alabama with uh, seven minutes gone by in Tuscaloosa. It's 12 to six. Finals tonight, a couple of blowouts. Florida uh, took care of South Carolina, 81 to 60. And fourth ranked Tennessee cruised past Georgia, 70 to 41. So. Went well for the two home teams thus far in the games that have gone final on the Yellowwood scoreboard. Out of bounds, baseline right, Auburn ball, 18 to shoot, Moore will trigger. Lobs it to Flanagan inside the arc, free throw line down the left side of the lane, hangs off the Ooh. glass and scores. It doesn't get any better than that play. What a drive to the basket with the left hand. And that's our Sun South drive of the game. Sun South John Deere, preferred track with the Tigers. Find your local dealer at sunsouth.com. 15-9 Auburn, a and ball, long three, Taylor, he swishes it from the left yeah, he side. Can, he can hit the, it's catch and shoot, he's really good. 35% from three, that's pretty good. 15-12 to 12, Auburn on top, 14-20 in the first. Donaldson, free throw line, Cardwell, down the lane, lost it, ball is kicked, it goes out of bounds, Auburn has it with 18 to shoot. They're gonna leave Cardwell open, hoping that we'll go in there and then deny the ball out on everybody else. Now, if he gets it in the middle, they collapse on Dillon. They do. Now, they're going to they're gonna do that. Flanagan will trigger down the left sideline. Auburn's lead is three. Inbound at the top, Chris Moore. Down the left side of the lane, Cardwell leads for uh, Donaldson and a moving screen on Dillon yeah. against Andre Gordon. That's, that's official that needs license, hunting license, because he was hunting for a foul. Yeah, let, let's see that at the other end of the floor as well. Oh, man. No. Oh. The only thing good about that call was the fact that it was made by a bad official. 15-12 Auburn. a and ball, 14-09 in the first half. Radford, right wing. Crossover dribble brings him into the key. Down the left side of the lane to the baseline. Head fake shot is up. It's missed. And the rebound out of bounds off of Dylan Cardwell. Dylan's trying so hard he's making mistakes. He just needs to be Dylan Cardwell. That's plenty enough for us. He will get a rest, and uh, Janai Broom back in for Auburn on the low post. a and ball out of bounds, baseline right. Gordon will trigger. Lobs it to the top, Coleman has it. Hit an Auburn player, right wing three, Taylor, we're tied. He shoots it pretty well from out there. I, we didn't expect him to shoot it from the parking lot, though. Boy, he's two of two from the parking lot. Yes, he is. Tied at 15, 13-41 in the first. Donaldson, right side Flanagan, back to Trey between the circles. Now Chris Moore, left wing KD Johnson, down to the baseline, gets cut off, leaves for Broom. One dribble, gets bumped up for a shot foul. He was triple teamed, and he got fouled, and the foul will go against Henry Coleman the third, his first. They're jamming, they're, they're wanting the ball to go into the post so they can double down on it and jam up the middle. And uh, so far, it's not working for him. Broom at the free throw line. The first is good. Janai with five double doubles in Auburn's seven games in the league. He's been a very good Ooh. player for us, offensively and defensively. And had he not been hurt one time, I expected greater things out of him. He missed the second free throw. Lior Berman, by the way, checks into the Auburn lineup. Tigers by one. 13 24 in the first half. Radford at the wing against Trey Donaldson. Top of the circle. Gordon down the left side. To the baseline for Garcia. Driving on Broom. Head fake twice. Puts it up and scores. A lot of ball fakes there now. You can't fall for that and, and create foul situations. AM has his first lead of the game. 17-16. 13 minutes to go in the first half of play. Moore, Donaldson, right wing behind the back dribble between the legs dribble. Crossover dribble, 18 footer, nobody's fouled. I think Garcia got him. Nope, it wasn't Garcia. It was number four, Wade Taylor, the fourth. Wade Taylor, we, I, I'd rather Wade commit those fouls. I'd like to see him head back to Dallas. Donaldson at the line, four to 54% free throw shooter for the Tallahassee, Florida native. The first is good. Trey's been playing better in practice. He's earned the time that he's getting. 
and I'd like to see him have success. He could really help us. Ten and a half minutes of ball game for Trey Donaldson in his freshman season. At the backup point guard, backing up, of course, Wendell Green. He missed the second free throw, but I think we have a lane violation against AM, and I think it's Henry Coleman the third. Henry got it, he got a run and go about five minutes before the guy shot it, I think. I mean, I will lie on occasion. No. Yes. Donaldson, second free throw, good. Auburn takes advantage. All right. Defense without fouling. 18 17, Auburn. 12 47, first half of play. AM ball, Radford. Open for a three at the top. He didn't get it. Brew gets a rebound. Outlet Donaldson up the floor. KD Johnson on the wing. Didn't take the three, had it. Picks it up down to the baseline, left side for more. Chris dribbles to the wing, picks up the dribble. Now to the sideline for Donaldson. Shot clock at 15. He takes a look at the bench, brings it to the middle of the floor. Looks left for Chris Moore. Nine to shoot. Moore, left wing Johnson. KD. Brings it to the top, drives. Underneath, up oh. and in with the scoop shot. Ooh. KD Johnson with the bucket. That's a TV shot right there. That'll be on TV tomorrow if it's not today. 20 to 17, Auburn. Radford penetrates, gets cut off by Donaldson at the top. Garcia, off the left wing it goes for Gordon. Drives, 18 footer Gordon, didn't get it, rebound room. We're limiting them to one shot, and that's exactly what we need to do. Donaldson across midcourt hits Moore in the center circle. Chris left hand dribble. Now back to the center circle for Donaldson to Moore between the rings. Left wing KD. Skip pass. Donaldson back to the top for Johnson. 12 to shoot. KD on the left hand gets a rim to the basket. Kicks it to the corner to the wing. Donaldson. Ball deflected. Broom goes up and it's knocked out of his hand. And here's AM on the break. Got to get back. Dennis leads for Radford. Across midcourt for the fighting Texas Aggies. Don't leave him open on the wing. Gets a screen down the lane. Radford into the corner, and it was touched out of bounds by KD Johnson, and we have a timeout. 11 10 to go in the first half. Auburn by three. Tigers 20. Texas AM, Texas AM 17. Stay tuned. This is the Auburn Sports Network. AuburnTigers.com is the official website of Auburn Athletics. Read the latest feature stories on your favorite Tiger teams. Get critical game day info. Search videos and audio. Find how to get connected through social and digital media or by joining Tigers Unlimited. Shop the AU Photo Store or just find the next event on the athletic calendar. Plus, all athletics broadcasts are streamed free at AuburnTigers.com slash watch. AuburnTigers.com, the official online home of Auburn Athletics. Thanks for choosing Whataburger. What can I get started for you? At Whataburger, each meal is made to order, so you can always get exactly what you crave. If that's a Whataburger, what a meal, you got it. But if you're in the mood for something a little more you, like a Whataburger with grilled onions, crispy bacon, and creamy pepper sauce, go for it. March to the beat of your own drum. Bite into the beef of your own Whataburger creation. Whataburger, just like you like it. When you see the SEC student-athlete, it's easy to picture the swing, the stance, the form. But look closer, and you'll see the heart, the brain, the clutch lab partner, the avid two-stepper, the pride of a hometown, and a little brother's hero. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. Back at Neville Arena, Brad Law courtside with another check of the Yellowwood scoreboard in the Big East. A couple of uh, big games tonight in that conference. Number 23, Providence up 10 on Butler at the half. Friars lead the Bulldogs 36 to 26. Earlier tonight, 13th ranked Xavier withstood a furious second half rally by number 19, Yukon. And the Musketeers hold off the Huskies 82-79. Yukon scored 55 points in the second half but uh, they needed three more at least. Xavier gets the win in the big top 20 showdown. Houston fell to number three in this week's poll. Cougars won in Orlando over UCF tonight, 82 to 71. That's a check of the Yellowwood scoreboard. Now back to the voice of the Tigers and the Hall of Fame coach, Andy Burcham and Sonny Smith. It's been a good shooting half for Auburn. The Tigers are yes. seven of 10 
from the field in the first half of play. That, that has not been Auburn's problem so far. Auburn's shooting the ball extraordinarily well. And ten getting point. points in the ten paint, points. Sonny. Yeah, ten, ten points, points I like to that. A&M's four in the paint. 20 to 17 Tigers, 11-10 to go. First half of play, A&M ball coming out of the timeout break. Auburn jumped out to that big first half lead. The Tigers led by eight at one point of the yeah. first half of play. But uh, A&M, boy, rallied right back, and it's been back and forth ever since. Well, they got, they got it back in a half-court game again now. We were getting deflections, steals, and, and a lot of things, getting points out of them and chances for points. Now they've got it in a half-court game. We're going to have to beat them off the dribble a little bit more. It will be Broom, Green, Williams, Berman, and Katie Johnson, the Auburn Five. Dennis, Garcia, Gordon, Radford, and Marble for a and I don't know if those black uniforms make them look bigger, but they look, they're an awful big team. I agree, Sonny. Radford will trigger down the left sideline near the corner in front of the Auburn bench. 15 to shoot for Texas A&M. Inbound into the baseline, it comes for Garcia. Into the corner, three ball missed. Rebound tapped, and it's Berman that comes up with it for Push Auburn. It. Up the right sideline, Auburn will settle into its half-court offense. Wendell Green on the left-hand dribble. Left wing, KD Johnson. Screen from Broom, double team. Johnson in the corner, he's in trouble. Tried to throw it out of bounds, it does off A&M. They're showing one thing now. They, anytime you drive it towards the baseline, they're gonna double a ball every time. So now you've gotta have receivers in two different places coming out of those traps. 15 to shoot for Auburn. Out of bounds, baseline left. Jalen will trigger. For Berman in the corner. Gets out of that corner. Dribbles out of a double team, out to the top. Uh, that's good. They're really good at defending out of bounds. Down the left play. side of the lane, Broom to the hole off the glass. Oh. Yes! <laughs> and a foul on the play! You don't get any prettier than that. Oh! I love that. What's that? Prettier. Okay. Is that a, is that a new word? It, it, it isn't on Roan Mountain. <laughs> no, no, it's number one up there. We had pretty flowers, <laughs> pretty people. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty moonshine. Uh, I wouldn't have brought that up. Oh, I'm sorry. That's a family tradition at my house. Seven free or seven points make it eight for Janai Broom on the three-point play. I love the way we're playing right now. I love the way we're playing. Wade Taylor checks into the game for AM along with Hayden Hefner, a 6'6 junior from Nederland, Texas. Don't and let him is, shoot a three. Yeah, he's a three-point gunner. Don't let him shoot a three. 14 of 38, shooting 50% in SEC play from the field. Auburn leads 23-17. 10-36, first half of play. Taylor across midcourt. Near a double team, stays out of it. Bounce pass, Marble between the circles. One dribble off the left side for Dennis. Dennis against Berman. Trice down to Berman. To the baseline, shoots and scores. I tell he you got what, a little separation. He just takes it until he's run over about three people, and then he shoots it. 23-19, Auburn, Tiger basketball. 10-11 to go in the first half. Wendell Green between the circles. Drifts off the right side, right sideline pass, Berman. Bounce pass, Broom off the left wing, KD. Top of the circle for Wendell. 13 to shoot. Midway mark of the first half. Tigers by four with the ball. Wendell to Broom, right wing. Berman, three. Oh, right down in there. And uh, Hefner gets the rebound for AM. Left sideline, Dennis. 4 3. Good. Now, if you shoot a quick shot and it bounces long, they're going to run with that. And you're going to have to get back and defend the three. Couldn't tell AM struggling for the free throw or the three point line tonight. They're five of seven. Double team broom, free throw line. Left corner for KD. Three ball in the air. In and out. Oh, he's hit two balls right down the middle. It didn't stay. 23 22 Auburn AM ball. Taylor up the floor. Down the left side of the lane. Off the glass. It's good. Now they're going to run with certain, anything that bounces long, so you're going to have to defend the break in this game also. AM has taken the lead, 24-23. Broom, right side of the circle. Has the three, doesn't take it. Into the corner, right side for KD, 13 to shoot. KD in front of the AM bench. Down to the baseline, Broom triple team. Ball knocked out of his hand, Auburn ball with eight to shoot. They're showing one thing for sure. Anytime the ball goes to post or into broom, 
They're going to double team it or triple team it. They're going to come from the back side, so you got to be ready for that. Berman out and Flanagan in for Auburn. This is Auburn starting five other than KD Johnson in there right now. We're not getting good looks in the half court right now. We're going to have to get better looks with ball movement. Brim the inbound Jalen into the lane for Flanagan up with the left hand. It didn't go. And the got rebound a, comes to Marble for a &M. Got a good shot, though. Quickly up the floor, Dennis at the left wing. Outside the arc between the circles for Taylor. Taylor, bounce pass. Now to the top for Hefner. Down the right side, Marble to the hole. He got it. They're moving the ball extremely well, and your, their game plan is to get it inside the lane after a few, two, two or three passes. Biggest lead for AM at three. They're on a 9 0 run. Wendell Green, left wing, spins to the free throw line, down the lane. Underneath, reverse layup. Good by Jalen Williams, and he's fouled. You're not going to see a better play than that. That ought to be on some type of highlight. If we had a television in Roan Mountain, we'd have that on a highlight. A drive by Wendell, then a terrific pass, and Williams finished it. What, Boy, what, just a no-look pass. What a beautiful pass and, and working Jaylen, the ball in short in short distances. Yep. Jalen with the reverse layup. The foul was against Dennis. It's his second. So he will come out, and Tyrese Ratford, the senior out of Baton Rouge, is back in for a and Williams at the line, a chance for a three-point play. They've committed five team fouls. I hope we can get them in a situation where we're shooting and they're not. They're very good from the free throw line. Free throw is missed by Jalen. 26-25 A&M. 8.03, first half of play. Radford gets a screen, goes left wing, step back for three. Good. Radford is a heck of a player. They've got this game in a half court game now, and they're winning that half court battle. They are five of eight from the three point line. Shooting 31% from the three coming into tonight. AM by four, 29 25. Williams left wing, Zepp Jasper. Top of the circle for Wendell. It's long three, nope, long. Rebound Ooh. Coleman for AM. I never miss. I thought that one was down. AM by four. Drive. Taylor, right wing three, good. My, My goodness. goodness. They are burning it up from three. Right. And AM has forged a seven point lead, 32 25, with 7.17 to go in the first half of play. That's well guarded threes. We're guarding the three pretty well, and they're just shooting over us. Six of nine from three is AM. Flanagan, right corner, Jasper. Head fake at three. Williams to the corner, Zep three. Good. That's excellent sharing of the basketball right there. Inside, out, that's what we got to do to hurt this ball club. 32-28 Tigers, 650. Excuse me, 32-28 A&M, 646 in the first. Radford drives on Jasper all the way to the hole. No, but a whistle and a foul against Auburn. Well, you can see what their game plan is, if it is a game plan. He's taking the ball every time he can, and he's going to the basket, and he's going basically to his left hand. We're going to have to take that left hand away. Foul was against Jalen Williams, takes us to a timeout break. 6.40 in the first, a and 32, Auburn at 28. Stay tuned, Auburn basketball continues in a moment. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our home. When you step onto the court and into the spotlight, the moment to show that hard work and long days pay off. Because when that final shot leaves your hands and we leave our seats, that powerful moment connects us all. Alabama Power is a proud supporter of the Auburn Tigers. Power for a better Alabama. In 1925, Modelo began brewing beer for those who believe in better. A model beer steeped in the tradition of tireless effort. A rich Pilsner style lager for those who wear their heart and heritage in their rolled up sleeve. Since our first batch to every bottle raised today, we've proved that it doesn't matter where you come from, it matters what you're made of. Modelo Especial, brewed for those with a fighting spirit. Drink responsibly. Beer imported by Crown Imports, Chicago, Illinois. Do you want to know the secret to making a Whataburger? The secret is, there is no secret. It's simple. We make every Whataburger hot, fresh, and made to order with our never frozen 100% American beef patties, crisp, juicy veggies, fresh toasted buns, 
And most importantly, we don't start cooking until after you order. Now, if you want to know an actual secret, I put grilled jalapenos on my Whataburger. Whataburger, just like you like it. Auburn basketball is brought to you by Alabama Power. At Alabama Power, we give 100% to achieve 99.9% .9 dependability. Our commitment helps deliver power for a better Alabama. 6.40 to go in the first half of play. Auburn 32, Texas A&M 28. Auburn basketball is brought to you by East Alabama Health. With more than 70 new positions added in the past four years, they're growing their health care team to meet the growing needs of Auburn, Opelika, and the surrounding area. Texas A&M leads Auburn by four. I guess the biggest surprise early on, Sonny, is the way A&M is shooting the three in this three game. Ball. This is a team that came in shooting 31.5% from the three-point stripe coming in. A&M is six of nine from the three-point stripe in this first half of play. A lot of that might have to do with the scouting report. They weren't doing it, and they weren't doing it at a great rate, so we probably decided we'd take something else away. Now they've started making it. I'm sure we'll make the adjustment to guard that three better from here on out. And in one regard, Auburn perhaps shouldn't be surprised that A&M shooting the three ball well. Remember how well A&M shot the three yeah. against Auburn at the SEC tournament last March. But they're only shooting at 31% right now uh, coming into this game. Yeah. So I would not, I would have, I wouldn't have thought about last year. I would have thought about right now, but they're hurting us now. So we got to change what we're doing. It's not as though Auburn isn't shooting the ball well. The Tigers oh, are 10 of 17, 58.8%, but A&M's better. 12 of 20 from the field at 60% and six of nine from the three point stripe at 66.7%. Andy, they're not doing down. that with a lot of help. They're taking the ball and going one-on-one. -on -one. Now, why are they doing that? Because they're about a foot taller than us in most positions. That's one reason. This is I an might a &M, be lying a little bit on that. Maybe. This is an A&M team that has been holding SEC opponents to 20 points a game in the first half. Auburn has 28 points. It's A&M's offense right now that is leading the way for the Aggies. And yeah. Tyrese Radford is at the line to shoot two at 82% coming in. Yeah, they're shooting 67% from three. He averages about five and a half free throws per game. He's and he makes a, the first. He's got a good looking shot. He really does. Senior transfer from Virginia Tech. I've it been there. Gives A&M a 33-28 lead. Now 34 to 28 A&M with the lead. All right, they're going the free throw line. They're getting the ball where they want to. Our defense has got to tip it up, and they might be playing a zone. No. On the left side, Broom. Man. Left side of the key. Needs to get rid of it. Does with a handoff to Wendell Green. And he gets fouled at the top. Taylor got, was in the air. Wendell kind of stepped into him a little bit. Taylor was called for his second foul. It's very evident what they're trying to do. They're trying to take. Wendell Green out of the game. Yes, and they're they doing it by doubling each time he puts a dribble and, and by really putting the defense on him. Bruce I don't Pearl. think they'll be able to keep that up. Yeah, Bruce Pearl talked about it in that pregame. He figured that's what they would try to do. Inbound comes to Wendell. Right side for Jalen. Off the left side for Green. Wendell lobs it inside the arc. Left side. Broom against Hefner. Up from seven. He missed it short. Mm. Yeah, Hefner guard was guarding the post. That's why we got it to him. That's good basketball. We just didn't make it. 34-28, A&M with the ball and the lead. Tyrese Radford across midcourt. Top of the circle, right side inside the arc, top of the key. They hand it back to Radford, down the lane. Radford to the hole, and he scores. Radford's got to take away that left hand. He's a pro going to his left. Biggest lead in the ball game for A&M, 36-28, 5.48 to go. That's quieted the crowd here at Neville Arena. Green between the rings. Right side picked up by Garcia, penetrates to the free throw line. Left side picks it up, now to the top for Williams, or for Williams. Two Flanagan, straightaway three ball, short. Rebound A&M. All right, they're taking us out, of, out on offensive rebound. Really good blockouts. We gotta get some more people going to the offensive board because they're not running with the ball. A&M shooting 62% in the first half. Radford inside the arc. Top of the circle, Coleman. Left wing, Gordon. Penetrates to the baseline. Back out to the top, into the corner for Gordon. Eight to shoot. They can get the lead to 10. Hefner right wing three, missed it. Rebound tapped out, and it comes to AM. Gordon at the top. 
Left wing, open three ball, Radford, no. Weak side rebound, Broom. Great defense by the Tigers. Auburn basketball, trailing by eight, 36-28, 4.50 to go. First half, they double team Wendell, he's in some trouble. Throws it to Broom at the top. Into the left corner, Williams. Left wing, Zep, three. Nope. Weak side rebound, Broom had it, lost it. Radford the other way for AM. On the wing, inside Ooh, the arc, that's drives a charge. A that's a charge. And they got him for a walk. Ooh, I'll take that. When you miss a call and it still goes your way, you got to take it. Chris Moore into the ball game, so is Dylan Cardwell, as both Broom and Williams sit down for the Tigers. 4.36 to go in the first half. AM has hit seven of its last nine. Yeah, we're hanging in there on this 28 points. We got to move the ball a little bit and get a better shot. AM by eight, Auburn basketball. Lionel Green Jr. across midcourt, working against Radford. Now Jasper at the top, it's Chris Moore. Moore on the left hand dribble. Outside the arc, picked up by Garcia. Left side for Allen Flanagan, working on Radford. Penetrates, double team. Out to the top, Moore. Down the left side of the lane, leaves for Flanagan, nine to shoot. Allen between the legs, dribble inside the arc. Fade away from 12. It's in and out. And the rebound comes to Radford for Texas A&M. We're getting shots, but it's taken us a while to do it, and we're only getting one shot. Auburn has been out-rebounded 14 to eight in the first half of play. 36-28, Tigers trailing. Radford inside the arc. Right wing, Gordon penetrates to the hole and scores, and it's a 10-point lead for we're, Texas A&M. We're trying to stop Radford now, and it's opening up the other people, and we got to do a better job on our own man. And a timeout on the floor with 3.48 to go after a 10-2 start for Auburn. Texas A&M has roared back, and the Aggies have a 10-point lead with 3.48 to go in the first half of play. Texas A&M 38, Auburn 28, and this is the Auburn Sports Network. Hey, Tiger fans. Join Coach Johnny Harris and the Auburn women's basketball staff for the Coach J Show. The show airs live on location from Baumhauer's Victory Grill every Monday at 6 p.m. Get the latest updates on the Tigers from Coach Jay while enjoying delicious food from Baumhauer's. The show is available locally on FM Talk 93.9 FM and anywhere else on the Auburn Game Day app. Make your plans now to join us for the Coach Jay Show at Baumhauer's Victory Grill, Mondays at 6. War Eagle. Head down. He's in. Touchdown, Auburn. The game has changed. And the future of Auburn Athletics now demands a strong name, image, and likeness program. I'm Andy Burcham, and I urge you to support On to Victory, the name, image, and likeness collective for Auburn student athletes. Please take this opportunity to improve the lives of our players and give our teams the best chance of success. Learn more at ontovictory.com. Hey, I'm Charles Barkley. Call for a Redmond and water at bars and restaurants throughout the great state of Alabama. Redmond Vodka, available at select ABC stores and package stores. Redmond Vodka is eight times distilled, gluten-free, and is made from non-GMO corn. Looking to support a local business? Redmond Distilling is Alabama proud and minority owned. Learn more online at redmonddistilling.com. Brad Law courtside at Neville Arena. Three minutes, 48 seconds to go until halftime. We'll bring you the Koneka Sausage Halftime Show. Full check of the Yellowwood scoreboard, including Mississippi State leading Alabama 34-26 with 90 seconds to go before halftime in Tuscaloosa. Also, Auburn's next opponent, West Virginia, got a big second half surge in Lubbock today and uh, the Mountaineers beat the Red Raiders at Texas Tech 76-61. Texas Tech falls to 0-8 in Big 12 play. That's West Virginia's second conference win. It'll be Auburn in Morgantown Saturday morning at 11 o'clock Central Time as part of the SEC Big 12 Challenge. Lots of work here to do, though. Tigers down 10 to Texas A&M, 348 to go in the first half. Back to Andy Burcham and Sonny Smith. If you're searching for that perfect beach home, find your piece of paradise on the Alabama Gulf Coast with the number one REMAX agent in Alabama. Mindy Jones with REMAX Paradise. Begin your search by visiting Mendy at Paradise. Spell it out, Mendy at Paradise.com. A&M right now on a 21-5 run. They've hit 
eight of their last 10 from the field. On the other hand, Auburn has missed its last four field goals and have gone three minutes and 14 seconds without scoring. The big thing about this is the fact that they're making three-point shots. I didn't think that would be as much of a factor, but they're making those three-point shots. We got to defend the three a little bit better. Auburn down 10, 348 in the first, Tiger ball. Wendell Green Jr. at the left wing working on Andre Gordon. After the Auburn timeout to the top for Moore to the right sideline for Zepp Jasper. He's picked up by Hefter. To the top for Wendell, 10 to shoot for the Tigers. Green drives on Gordon, spins at the free throw line, down the lane, up and under and in. Well, what a tremendous drive. Heavily guarding, they're dropping people off in Dublin. He's still beating them. What a player. Stopped the storing strike, a scoring drought of almost three and a half minutes for Auburn. Eight point AM lead. Radford, left sideline. Didn't take the three, goes down inside the arc to Garcia. Garcia, right side for Gordon. Gordon to the top. Radford working on Cardwell. Backs up with six to shoot. Radford gets a screen from Garcia. Blows past Dillon and puts it in with the left hand. What a tremendous try on defense by. Our guy, D Dylan, but we still couldn't stop him. Radford with 14 points in the first half, 40 to 30 a and Between the circles, Cardwell, Wendell off the left side, 16 to shoot. That back door intended for more, it didn't get there. a and ball. Was, that was just a bad pass, but it had, it had every thought was good because we had a back cut for a basket. Two and a half minutes to go in the first half, a and on top of Auburn, 40 to 30. a and with the ball and the lead. Uh, let's make Radford go somewhere to the left. Make him go home if he can, because he's killing us. Radford, four of eight from the field, four of five from the line. That includes two three-pointers in the first half. He pounds the ball between this uh, in the center circle. Uh, he's going to go to his right. Then we're going to force him that way, and he can't go it. Uh, he, he wants to go it. left. Oh, I know. Drives down the right side of the lane, pulls off the glass. He missed it long. Rebound out of there, Flanagan on the break for Auburn. Allen penetrates down the lane, leaves it for Cardwell. Dillon to the basket, goes up, it was blocked. a and ball. a and by 10, a minute 47 to go in the first half. They're, going, they're taking more time trying to get the drive to the right, I mean to the left by Radford. Radford inside the arc, left side to Gordon, down the left side of the lane. Underneath, Coleman to the hole, put it up, he didn't get it. Long rebound to outlet Jasper. Two Flanagan at the left wing. A minute 24 to go in the first, Auburn down by 10. We need a basket. Get things going again. Wendell, picked up by Garcia, now Hefner in a switch. Maintains the dribble, left wing for Jasper. Top of the circle for Wendell. 10 to shoot for the Tigers. Now double teamed. Trying to get rid of it. Gets fouled. Fouled him three times. And there's a foul. There's a steal for a and and a jam by Garcia and a foul on the play. Man, oh, man. Green got mugged at midcourt. It was not called. And then Garcia got a breakaway and got fouled by Wendell. You got a three-year sentence in Roan Mountain on that kind of beating. Whew. They got to call that. Second foul on Wendell Green Jr. Garcia with a chance for a three-point play. A 70% free throw shooter. He's out of the Dominican Republic. Hamilton Heights, Tennessee, a transfer from Mississippi State. 12 point lead for AM, biggest lead of the night for either team. They're hurting us right now by driving the ball hard. Yes, they are. And we're having to foul them. They're also defending us better than we've been defended in a while. Free pole by Garcia is good. And AM has opened up a 13 point lead yeah. here. With a minute to go in the first half of play. A little patience now and get a good shot. We're having, we're forcing the ball just a little bit. Left wing KD to Broom who fell down. He was open and he just simply fell down. And AM has it with a 13 point lead in the basketball. 46 seconds to go in the first half. Four turnovers for Auburn in the last two and a half minutes. Radford in the center circle. They're Working up. the clock, it's down to 12 on the shot clock. On the left wing, drives on KD along the baseline, reverse layup, it's good. Oh, he's a, he's a heck of a player. You he let him go to six, his left, he's a pro. He has 16 in the first half, and AM has opened up a 15-point lead. That has not happened to Auburn this year here no. at Neville Arena. 
Green across midcourt, final 12 seconds of the first half. Auburn trails by 15 points. Wendell steps up, Gotta now go. backs up, six to shoot. Wendell, head fake, three ball straight away. Banked up and he missed it. Rebound Broom and the first half comes to a close. And for the first time this year, and for the first time since 2021, Auburn goes off the floor trailing by 15 points at the break. My goodness gracious. Auburn went the final three minutes and 21 seconds and did not score in the first half. And AM closed the first half on a 13 to two run. And at the break, Texas A&M leads Auburn 45 to 30. Time now for the Koneka Sausage Halftime Report. And here is Brad Law. All right, Andy, thank you very much. It was 10 to two Auburn. And from that point, Texas A&M outscored the Tigers 43 to 20 as we give you the Koneka Sausage Halftime Show. Koneka Sausage is proud to be the official smoked sausage and hot dog of the Auburn Tigers. Make Koneka Sausage part of your game day and family traditions. Uh, let's get to the Yellowwood School Board and uh, the other SEC game is also surprising at the half. In Tuscaloosa, Mississippi State grabbed an early lead at Alabama. The Bulldogs have been able to maintain it. It's a seven point edge right now for Chris Jans and company, 36-29. Hale, uh, Mississippi State leads Alabama. The Bulldogs are shooting better than 56% in the game. Alabama just 33%. Crimson Tide have hit just three of 16 threes through one half of basketball. So Mississippi State leads Alabama 36 to 29 at the half in Tuscaloosa. Elsewhere, the home teams perform much better. Big leads, big wins for number four, Tennessee over Georgia, 70 to 41. Zykevia Ziegler with 11 points and seven assists for the Volunteers who moved to seven and one in SEC play. Florida has now won five conference games. The Gators cruise past South Carolina in Gainesville, 81 to 60. Colin Castleton, 18 points, four blocks, three steals, three assists. Gators now five and three in SEC play. Also on the Yellowwood School Board, outside the SEC tonight, it was third ranked Houston bouncing back and beating UCF down in Orlando, 82 to 71. In the Big East, number 13, Xavier, beat 19th ranked UConn in stores, 82 to 79. It was a game Xavier led big early. In fact, they led by 15 at the half. The Huskies stormed back, but couldn't quite finish the job as Xavier gets the road win. And currently in the Big East is number 23, Providence leading Butler 44-33 as they play early in the second half. Here our score, Auburn trails Texas A&M 45 to 30. It's a 15 point deficit for the Tigers. We'll check Auburn Athletics when we come back to Neville Arena. That's after these words from your local stations. This is the Auburn Sports Network. The Auburn Basketball Review is your weekly recap and preview of what's happening with the Tigers. Highlights, interviews, special features, plus Bruce Pearl's breakdown of what the Tigers are doing in the week ahead. Find the show on stations throughout Alabama, Valley Sports Southeast, the Auburn Tigers channel on YouTube, and AuburnTigers.com. Look for the Auburn Basketball Review this weekend. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our home. When you step onto the court and into the spotlight, the moment to show that hard work and long days pay off. Because when that final shot leaves your hands and we leave our seats, that powerful moment connects us all. Alabama Power is a proud supporter of the Auburn Tigers. Power for a better Alabama. Hey, Tiger fans, this is Andy Burcham. The Auburn experience, you know it. There's nothing else like it. It's what binds us together as the Auburn family. And when you give to Auburn, you build on a strong foundation. Your gift opens doors of opportunity for top students, recruits exceptional faculty, and fuels innovative research. This is what creates our unique Auburn experience. And your gift makes it possible today and for generations to come. Give today at auburngiving.org. By now, your daily routine is probably a little too routine. What I 
Don't you want to change? Don't you want to start playing by your own rules and escape the routine so your fantasy becomes reality? Where every night is an adventure, where new flavors are ready to be tasted, where it feels like you're a winner. Take a chance. Reward yourself. Make your routine anything but routine. Escape every day at Wind Creek Casino and WindCreekCasino.com. Well, a first half that went Texas A&M's way. The Aggies lead Auburn by 15 here at Neville Arena, 45 to 30. Brad Law courtside as we uh, check the week ahead in Auburn athletics, and we're getting into the busier uh, time of the year as we roll through the month of January. We get closer to some other spring sports starting. This time next month, we'll have baseball and softball underway. But tomorrow, cross country, track and field at the uh, Texas Tech Open and Multis out in uh, Lubbock, Texas, as the indoor season is underway. Women's basketball plays tomorrow at Kentucky. That's a 6 o'clock central start for the Tigers and Wildcats. Coach Jay and company scored their first SEC victory of the season Sunday here at Neville Arena against Ole Miss, outlasting the Rebels in overtime. So finally with Aisha Koulibaly and honesty, Scott Grayson healthy and on the floor at the same time. Uh, this team starting to put some things together. So Auburn at Kentucky, that is tomorrow night, 6 o'clock. The game will be broadcast locally on FM Talk 93.9 in the Auburn Opelika area, and you can listen to it anywhere on the Auburn Game Day app or online at auburntigers.com. Also tomorrow night, 6 o'clock Central, it's Tiger Talk, live from Baumhauer's Victory Grill on Bent Creek Road in Auburn. We hope you'll join us. Bruce Pearl will be there. Chris Moore will be there, along with women's tennis coach Caroline Lilly. The Tigers, a top 15 team to start the season, and they're in action again this weekend at the uh, Yarbrough Tennis Center. Women's tennis hosting Cal Santa Barbara on uh, Saturday at 11 o'clock and then Sunday in action against either UCF or Arizona State. So we'll talk with Coach Lilly on Tiger Talk about that. Uh, tomorrow night at Baumhauer's Victory Grill. The action-packed home weekend continues Friday night with Auburn Gymnastics in action against NC State. Tigers defeated Arkansas last Friday night in their first home meet of the season. Jeff Graba's bunch back in action at 7 o'clock Central Time this Friday against NC State here at Neville Arena. We had Darian Goborn on our uh, pre-pregame show, the warm-up on Facebook and YouTube earlier tonight. Uh, just talking about the electricity that they get from the fans, and uh, it's become the place to be, just like most other events here at Neville Arena. Auburn Gymnastics in action Friday night at 7 o'clock. Before we go further, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification on the Auburn Sports Network. We mentioned women's basketball on the road tomorrow. Your next chance to see Coach Jay's team at home is Monday. This coming Monday night at 6 o'clock, they'll be in action here at Neville Arena against Florida for a 6 o'clock Central Time start. The men trail Texas A&M at halftime by 15 points. It's 45-30. Tremendous defensive effort for Texas A&M with Auburn shooting in front of the A&M bench. We'll see if the fortunes change. Uh, when Auburn is playing offense in front of their bench in half number two. Stats from the first half coming your way when the Koneka Sausage Halftime Show continues in a moment. Koneka Sausage is a product we all know and love, and it's the official sausage and hot dog of the Auburn Tigers. Koneka Sausage is made from the finest cuts of pork, patented blend of seasonings, all natural casings, and smoked over a pure hickory fire for that true southern flavor. Enjoy a crowd-pleasing Koneka Sausage dog or premium hot dog while watching the Tigers and make Koneka part of your game day or any day. Koneka Sausage is celebrating their 75th year of the Sessions family, making their premium smoked sausage in Evergreen, Alabama. Be sure to visit the new Koneka gift shop right off I-65 at exit 96. And we're back with breaking news. Coke Zero Sugar might be the best Coke ever. That's right, Jim. Coke Zero Sugar is a must-try for any Coke fan, so make sure you... Jim. <laughs> Jim. Oh, I'm in there. Ooh, yes, this tastes like the best Coke ever to me. Your thoughts, Jen? Well, can I have a sip? <laughs> Jen, we're in the middle of reporting the news. I need to try it first. North American beavers are excellent swimmers, but on land, they waddle about clumsily. That is until they spot the yellow tag on a stack of yellow wood brand pressure treated pine. 
their instincts kick in and the colony springs into action. <laughs> Just like that, these master builders make off with their new found building materials. For five-star backyards, Yellowwood brand pressure-treated pine. If it doesn't have that yellow tag, you don't want it. Hey, I'm Charles Barkley. Call for a Redmont and water at bars and restaurants throughout the great state of Alabama. Redmont Vodka, available at select ABC stores and package stores. Redmond Vodka is eight times distilled, gluten-free, and is made from non-GMO corn. Looking to support a local business? Redmond Distilling is Alabama proud and minority owned. Learn more online at redmonddistilling.com. Top of the circle, Coleman. Coleman off the left wing for Radford. There's a steal. Wendell Green on a drive. Poor Flanagan with the flush. Well, some early electricity for the Tigers who got out to a 10-2 start, but it was, frankly, all Texas A&M after that point in the first half. Auburn forced two turnovers in the first six minutes of the ball game. A&M turned it over just once over the last 14 minutes of that first half of play. And as a result, the Aggies have the advantage here 45-30. to Halftime numbers brought to you by the Alabama Department of Public Health. Don't wait. Vaccinate. Protect yourself and others against COVID and flu. Visit alabamapublichealth.gov slash IMM. Texas A&M torrid shooting better than 58% from the floor. It's 17 for 29. And the Aggies hit six of their 11 triples in the first half. They were five of six at the free throw line. Auburn was 11 of 23, a respectable 48% from the field. The three of 11 from long distance and five of eight at the foul line. Auburn was 8 of 12 inside the three-point line. They just didn't get that many opportunities over the last 12 minutes or so of that first half because Texas A&M clogged the lane effectively. Uh, some of the other team numbers, uh, Texas A&M uh, scored five points off seven Auburn turnovers. Points in the paint where the Tigers had a big edge early. Aggies started driving successfully. They lead there 18-16. Fast break points, a 3-2 A&M advantage. Points off the bench. Texas A&M leads in that department, 7-4. Leading scores for the Aggies in the first half. Tyrese Radford had 16 points and five rebounds. That led everybody on both sides. Wade Taylor, the fourth, added 11 points in the first half. Other leading rebounders for the Aggies, uh, Anderson Garcia and Henry Coleman, the third, with three boards apiece. For Auburn in the first half, Janai Broom, three of five shooting, two of three at the free throw line. He led the Tigers with eight points and three rebounds. Six points apiece for Wendell Green Jr. and Zepp Jasper. Green also has four assists and two turnovers, plus a steal in the first half. Jalen Williams uh, scored just two points. He has three assists and no turnovers in the first 20 minutes of basketball. Also scoring for the Tigers, Allen Flanagan with four, KD Johnson with two, and Trey Donaldson with two. We'll see how much things change when A&M's making its defensive calls on the opposite end of the floor and when their offensive calls are coming uh, on the, uh, the opposite end of the floor. We'll, we'll see how much things change as the teams change the ends of the floor here in the second half. Both teams are back on the floor warming up. Tigers trail by 15 at the intermission. We thank you for listening to the Koneka Sausage Halftime Show. Once again, your score at the half, Texas A&M 45, Auburn 30. You've been listening to the Koneka Sausage Halftime Show. Make Koneka Sausage part of your game day. Still family owned and made in Evergreen, Alabama since 1947. The second half is two minutes away. This is the Auburn Sports Network. Check out the Talking Tigers podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. The Talking Tigers podcast is a series of one-on-one -on -one interviews hosted by the voice of the Tigers, Andy Burcham. Each week, Andy is joined by a featured guest with Auburn ties from athletics, entertainment, and other walks of life. Past legends and present trailblazers. Insightful and entertaining. It's the Talking Tigers podcast with Andy Burcham. Like and subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts today. This is Auburn head coach and proud Ford F-150 owner, Bruce Pearl. The thing I hear most when people get in the cab of my F-150 is, this truck is huge. Well, I drive around some pretty big players, and when I get a seven-footer in the back seat and he's able to spread out, he's just blown away at how roomy and comfortable this truck is. 
So visit your local Ford dealer and check out Ford F-150, the official truck of the Auburn Tigers. Not all models, trims, or features may be available. Contact your dealer for more information. It's a great day for Auburn Tigers to get vaccinated. COVID and flu vaccines are an important tool to help stop the pandemic. The Alabama Department of Public Health is offering the COVID and flu vaccines to anyone six months and older. COVID and flu. The COVID and flu vaccines are safe, effective, and free. COVID and flu are still on the rise. Don't let COVID and flu stop you from supporting your favorite team. Continue to help protect yourself, your friends, and our campus by getting the COVID and flu vaccines. For more information, visit alabamapublichealth.gov slash IMM. We always picture the SEC student-athlete for their speed, their vertical, their agility. But it's time we picture them for more. For their campus voice, their community outreach, and for the simple fact that 20 years later, they're still someone's pride and joy. More than students, more than athletes. In the SEC, it just means more. The second half spark is brought to you by the finest electricians in the world. The brothers and sisters of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 613. All right, Auburn down 15 at the break. Sonny Smith, what's Auburn's uh, second well, half spark? They've taken away the whole, we can't, no fast breaks for us. So we got to get some of those. The other thing, they got, there's, they've, they got some steals, which means we, we're not taking care of the basketball the way we need to. We got to run some. We got to take better care of the basketball, and we cannot give them, uh, ex except one shot. And we got to guard those two guards of theirs. They're playing terrific. Auburn jumped out to a 10 to two lead at the 17:41 mark of the first half. From that point on, Texas A&M outscored Auburn 43 to 18, and. Yeah. This 15-point halftime deficit is not only the largest halftime deficit that Auburn has faced this season, it ties the largest deficit that Auburn has faced in any point of a game. Any and point. that was the second half of the Memphis game in Atlanta. Yeah, and this is a game where the two guards are taking all the shots for them. And you would say, well, we ought to be able to stop that. But they've got a mismatch from a size standpoint in every one of those and also from outside shooting right now. Their defense has been excellent. We, can, we, we, can, we cannot say that they have not defended us really well. It has been good, and they shot so very well from the three-point stripe in the first half. Yeah, now and that's, six that's a big 11. point. Yeah. And you talked about it, Sonny. Remember at that early on, Auburn had outscored A&M in the paint 10-4. Well, boy, that evened up in a hurry. Matter of fact, A&M took the lead in the paint, outscoring Auburn 18-16. to yeah, They started out. We started out beating them out on the perimeter. They took that away, and then we couldn't get the thing going on the inside. We need to get we need to get our, our offense going, offense, defense, outside a little bit. We got to do it a little bit outside scoring. And Emma have the ball to open up the second half of play. It is Auburn's starting five of Green, Jasper, Flanagan, Williams, and DeBroom. And for AM, Taylor, Dennis, Radford, Coleman, and Marble. Radford was sensational yeah, we've in the got, first half with 16 points and five rebounds. We got to get the ball out of his hands. And he has it right now. Throws it right sideline for Taylor. Taylor, left side, there's a steal by Wendell Green. Wendell drives to the hole, hangs, shoots, scores. Oh, what a way of protecting the basketball. That was a big time play. Big time play by Wendell Green. Kind of baited the pass, didn't oh, he? Oh, nobody could have blocked that shot. 42 or 30, 45, 32 a and Auburn draws first blood in the second half a and ball. We might be zoning. Taylor Coleman at the top. Off the right side. No, we're not. Hands the ball to Taylor there, gets a screen. Lobs it left side for Dennis, penetrates. Dennis, high arching shot, it was blocked, got it back, put it up, blocked. Rebound foul against Auburn. It will go against Janai Broom, his first foul of the yeah. night. You know, it's something you don't need to be saying this too much myself but we cannot give them second right, shots right. because they're getting great first shots don't don't give them two great second shots oh boy that foul against uh, broom i'm not sure that was a shooting foul quite frankly 
I'm not sure it was a foul on Brim Maybe as they're we looking, get a look at the replay. Maybe they're looking at their mistake. I don't think that that's the case, but. I don't think so either. They are looking at the replay monitor. Sounded impossible though, didn't it? Yes, it did. Auburn with a fast break basket for Wendell Green Jr. to open the second half. Tigers trail by 13 points, 45-32. The 15 point lead for a and at the break is the largest deficit for Auburn at any point of any game this season. Tying yeah. trailing at by Memphis or against Memphis in the second half of the holiday hoops giving in Atlanta. But we're very capable of scoring points in bunches. We really are. We've proven that in the past and I think we can continue that tonight. If we don't want to be playing too much with their size, if we can beat their size on the drive, get it down early, I think that's a good thing to do. They've looked at the replay monitor and Joe Lindsay is explaining their findings to Auburn head coach Bruce Pearl. Marble will go to the free throw line to shoot two. He's a 58% free throw shooter, transferred from Michigan State. He's been in double figures in every game in the SEC. Matter of fact, he's averaging 15 and a half points per game in SEC play. Played a little at Michigan State at one time, I think. He did. First free throw is good for Ju Julius Marble. Well, he's big enough to play. He could play for the Rome Mountain Skins. He's so big. Career high 19 points earlier this season against Florida. And he missed the second That's free throw. That's good. That's good. Now let's get something. They were pressing. Auburn trails by 14. Tiger ball against the press. Jalen Williams throws it ahead for Janai Broom. Penetrates to the hole, lays it in. That's the way to beat a press. Get it in the middle quickly. Get it up before they can re get into their set defense. 46-34, A&M, 11.52 to go. Second half, make that 18.50 in the second half. Taylor between the circles. Right side for Radford, back to Taylor. Left wing for Dennis. Dennis, one dribble, free throw line, Marble. Knocks down uh, Jasper, who draws the charge on Julius Marble. And i tell you what we're doing right now. We're playing a zone. We're playing a 2-3 zone. Now, whether it remains that after two or three passes, I don't know, but we played zone both times down the floor so far. Auburn basketball trailing by 12. Wendell Green across midcourt, right-hand dribble. They're showing zone, but I don't think they're playing zone. Yes, they are. Green, Williams, free throw line, Flanagan. Allen loses the ball, and he got fouled. Fortunately for Auburn, Flanagan was fouled by Wade Taylor of the fourth, and that's the third foul on Taylor. Yeah, and that may be why they're playing a zone. They got to have him. Out of bounds, baseline right, Auburn, 20 on the shot clock with 18.27 to go in the second half of play. Taylor leads them in everything but steals. Williams lobs it, mid lane for Janai. Broom around Marble, gets cut off, spins in the baseline, puts it up, he didn't get it. And Coleman pulls down the rebound for Texas A&M. Got a good look. All right, still playing a zone, it looks like. Matchup. Radford between the rings. Throws it right sideline, Taylor. Now between the circles, Coleman. Left wing for Radford. Inside the arc, near the corner. Throws it back to the wing, Taylor. Underneath for Marble, turnaround jumper, it's good. All right, now, we, if we're going to play a zone, we got it, We cannot allow it to go into the post without doubling it or getting getting it fronting it so they don't get a good pass. Seven points for Marble, a and by 14 with 17.45 in the second half. Flanagan between the circles off the left sideline. Top of the circle for Williams, Jalen, low post, Broom with the double hand dunk. If we reverse the ball quickly, the way they're overplaying everything, as we have two times down the court, we can do well against this team. Double figures tonight for Janai Broom. He has 12. Back to a 12-point game. AM with the lead in the ball. Taylor, long, three at the top. Nope. Rebound weak side, a whistle and a foul. It's going to well, be a that's push. pushing on there, but It's going to be a push, I think, on Radford. It will yeah. be his first foul as he he shuttered or he took care yeah, of. Yeah, even I could have Zep called Jasper. that one. Down 12, Auburn ball 17 17 All in right. the second half of play. They're showing type of zone, but they're playing man. Bounce pass, broom from, from Wendell. No, they Back are. to Green between the circles, left wing for Flanagan. Goes baseline, pull up jumper. No, air ball. Foul AM, foul on Jalen Williams. He might have got hurt on that. That's a bad lick. Yeah. Odd shot by Allen that he it was about a 12 footer. It, it might have gone 10 feet. 
Did I they? don't know if he lost his balance on the way up. I don't think there was a foul. No, I don't think so either. But the foul did come against Jalen Williams after the rebound by Texas A&M. All right, we got to have a stop. We're showing zone. I don't know what, both teams are showing zone. I don't know who's playing one. Texas A&M by 12 with the basketball. Taylor, low post marble against Broom. Leans in, goes up, it was blocked by Janai. Rebounded by Williams to Flanagan ahead. Out and across midcourt on the left-hand dribble. Hands the ball there to Wendell Green Jr. Wendell at the top, steps back outside the three-point arc with 20 to shoot. Switches to the right-hand dribble. Right wing pass for Flanagan. Gets a screen from Broom. Tried to pass it to Janai, and it was kicked by a and and that'll reset the shot clock New to shot 20. Clock on that one. Yeah, Auburn will have the ball down the right sideline. Tigers trail by 12, 16-29 to go in the second half. Coach Pearl's wanting to attack this right side of the court, and there's got to be a reason for that. Wendell will trigger to Janai outside the arc. Left side, group Williams underneath Williams. Or Flanagan up and good. That's why. Cuts the lead to 10. They were playing a zone, and we're cutting the ball into the middle of the lane, getting a wide open shot. 48-38 A&M, 16-12, second half. Texas A&M ball. Radford right sideline, working on Zepp Jasper. Penetrates to the key. Left wing, Taylor, open three. He didn't get it. Rebound to Radford underneath and a foul in the play against Zep Jasper. Well, that's a terrible call, and the reason for that is they shoved to get the rebound big time. I mean, even I could have called that one. Zep called for his first, and they're going to say it was on the shot. Well, I'm not sure that was a shooting foul. Well, we are the one that got fouled on the first play, not down. And Radford's at the line for two. That wasn't a shooting foul, was it? All right. Must have been. Radford gets a couple. First is good. Radford shoots 80% from the foul line. You don't want to be putting him on there much. Auburn basketball brought to you by Auburn Opelika Tourism. Yeah. Start your next visit to the Plains at aotourism.com. You don't want to put Radford in many places. He's really a good player. Fabulous. And he makes both of the free throws. All right, now they may press a little bit. They are. And they'll back off of the press now. And they've been playing a zone at the end of this. Let's see if they still stay in it. Yes, they are. Broom in the key. Tigers no. trail by 12. Janai penetrates. Pull up jumper. No, but he's fouled. I don't know but if it's marble. Or Coleman. I think it was Coleman that was called for the foul. 15.47 to go, first or second half. Janai at the free throw line when we come back. Texas A&M 50, Auburn 38. And Auburn basketball continues in a moment. Auburn Bank celebrates Hall of Fame coach Sonny Smith as color analyst on the Auburn Sports Network. This is Sonny Says. He crawled over the front of the iron and fell through. Yeah. And you get old Zion to become a fortune teller if you can't do anything else. A soothsayer, so to speak. Sue who? Yeah. I'm going to sue somebody. <laughs> we don't guess our half court office going here in a while. That's in there. Sonny Says is presented by Auburn Bank, champions of you. Attention business owners. Stop throwing your hard-earned money away on rent. Imagine owning your own building and saving thousands every year. Sound impossible? Not if you use General Steel. General Steel can help you save thousands by owning your own custom-designed building. Just call 888-74-STEEL or visit MyGeneralSteel.com to see how much money you can save with General Steel. Our buildings come with a 50-year warranty, and thousands of companies, from Fortune 500 corporations to startups, have trusted the General with their building needs. If you need to expand or start a new business, you really need General Steel. I'm very impressed with General Steel. Everyone's been extremely helpful. I'd recommend General Steel to anyone looking to build a steel building. Stop wasting money on rent. Call 888-74-STEEL. That's 888-74-STEEL. Or visit MyGeneralSteel.com to find out about all our popular quick construction kits, including a 40 by 60 foot building or a 50 by 100 clear span building. Just call 888-747-8335 now or MyGeneralSteel.com. Auburn basketball is brought to you by Chick-fil-A. All Chick-fil-A locations in Alabama proudly support the Auburn Tigers. 15.47 to go in the second. Texas A&M leads Auburn by 12.50 to 38 at Neville Arena, along with eight-time Hall of Fame coach Sonny Smith and Brad Law. 
This is Andy Bertram for every Auburn three-pointer. Bertram Hathaway Home Services donates $25 to Coach Pearl's Outlive Cancer Initiative, benefiting local cancer patients and treatment centers. You believe Auburn's playing a little bit better basketball here in the second they half? They are. What we're doing is we're throwing the ball to the post, and some good things have happened since we started throwing it to the post. They cannot overplay on the defense. They've got to dive on the ball. If they do, we can kick it out. They haven't dived yet, and, and Janiah Brew putting hurting on them right now. Henry Coleman the third was called for the foul going into the timeout break. His second, he had 16 points and 10 rebounds against Auburn a year ago, well, less than a year ago at the SEC tournament down in Tampa in that win for Texas A&M. Well, I say one thing, for his size playing a guard, he has pro potential. He really does. I don't know how good he is with both hands, but he certainly, he's a left-hander all the way, but he's a good left-hander. Auburn has cut into the lead at one time trailing by 15. Auburn has had the lead as low as 10 here in the second half. The Tigers have opened the second half at four of six from the field. AM is only one of six from the field in the second half. And both Janai Broom will go to the free throw line yeah. for two for Auburn. Andy, I think both teams jumped up their defense. It showed zone, played man, played, played a combination of defenses, trying to throw everybody off. And I think both teams have scored because of it. We gotta, we gotta make our dead ball points now because it looks like if we're gonna throw it inside, we're gonna get foul some. Janai Broom with 12 points and four rebounds. Auburn's leader in both categories. His first free throw is good. We gotta have dead ball points to get up on these guys. They're defending awfully well, but they're fouling a lot when they do. Four fouls for A&M in the second half, three for Auburn. Free throw is missed. Rebound out of bounds off of Auburn. Yeah, he might have got that right. I, I Flanagan touched it last as it went out of bounds along the baseline into the Auburn bench. All right, let's see what we play. We've been junking up our defense a little bit, so are they. We're showing zone. 11 point AM lead with the basketball. Radford inside the arc, right side of the circle. Drives on Wendell. Down the lane to the hole. He missed it. Rebound Broom. Bodies flying everywhere. Outlet Wendell. Auburn five on four the other way. There's a steal and a walk, or it was out of bounds. It was one of the two on Wade Taylor, the fourth, and Auburn has the ball. Down I think. 11 with 15 28 in the second half. I think they fouled on that play myself, and our bench is really complaining to the officials. <laughs> I think Wendell Green got fouled on that. Taylor and Marble come out for a and Garcia is into the lineup, and so is Dexter, excuse me, so is Andre Gordon. Well, you say, well, we got to recognize what defense here. Well, I don't know that we do because we've been scoring so fast here. Uh, not big time, but we're scoring it to in the start of the second half. Auburn can cut the lead to single digits for the first time in the second half, this time down the floor. Double team, Green in some trouble. Needs to get rid of it, steps through the double team, leads Jalen to the basket, head fake, up, and he oh, got it. Oh, good ball fake, good pass, good floor vision. Nine point lead, AM crowd trying to get back in it. Andre Gordon across midcourt for AM. High post pass, Coleman. Right wing for Radford, penetrates, spins to the free throw line, gets cut off, Gordon at the top. 15 to shoot for AM. low post to the wing, Gordon to the baseline, double team. Oh. Oh. Radford, left side of the circle, free throw line, Gordon leaves for Coleman, put it up, he missed it, may have been blocked. Good block, rebound Auburn, out of there, Williams to Wendell. Wendell at the left wing for three, missed it. Long rebound, Flanagan runs it Great. down for Auburn. Great, second chance opportunity. 14 and a half minutes to go in the second half. Auburn trails by nine. This Auburn crowd senses a comeback. Flanagan, right wing, top of the circle, Jalen. Flanagan with six, penetrates, pull up. Allen barely drew iron, rebound to Broom. And Janai was fouled by number 11, Anderson Garcia. And this will be Auburn's third crack at this offensive possession, and that'll bring Katie Johnson into the lineup, replacing Zepp Jasper at the two. Alan Flanagan's getting a lot of open shots. He gets to knocking those down. We're going to really hurt A&M. Allen with six points and three rebounds. Tiger ball. Jalen bobbled the ball as it was given to him by the official. We'll try it again. 
Underneath, Broom lost it, got it back. Out to the wing, Wendell to the corner. Jalen three, nope. Weak side rebound, a and Got to get back. Nine point a and lead, 50 to 41, 14 3 in the second. Radford works on Wendell Green in the center circle. High post pass, Coleman. Now Gordon against Broom. Into the corner, three ball, Radford, yep. Yeah, we're showing zone, and we're playing maybe a jump defense, but it could have been a zone, and that hurt, that hurt us that time by hitting Radford. If he catches it with his feet set, he's something. Third three of the night for Radford, a and by 12. Auburn basketball, KD, double team, throws it to Wendell at the left sideline. Wendell into the right corner for Flanagan. Allen, three ball, bad shot. I think he was looking for a foul. It didn't come. AM rebounds. Dennis up the floor for the fight, Nagy's. AM by 12 with the ball, 13 14, second half of play. Coleman, high post. Gordon outside the arc with a screen. Off the left side, inside the arc. Back out to the top for Dennis. 12 to shoot for Texas AM. He backs up with eight to shoot. Dennis against Williams. Launches a three. He didn't get it. Rebound tapped up and missed by Good Garcia. Good blockout. Flanagan rebounds up the floor for the Tigers. Allen inside the arc, down the left lane, drives to the hole and put it up and he missed it, but he was fouled. Allen feels like he can beat his man. Well, if he's got, if he, if he beats him, but he's got to cut it down, put it down, I think he can too. Foul goes against Dexter Dennis. It is his third foul of the game. Both he and Taylor with three fouls apiece. Chris Moore, Trey Donaldson, and Dylan Cardwell in for Auburn after the first free throw attempt by Allen Flanagan. Auburn trails by 12 with 12.49 to go in the second half. This is Auburn's largest deficit. It matches, well, excuse me, the 15 point trail at halftime is the largest deficit for Auburn at home this yeah, year. We're shutting them down. Now we got to get something going and we have a little bit. We're getting Flan some better looks. Flanagan made the first free throw. Hayden Hefner, the junior shooter for AM, is into the lineup, replacing Dennis, who picked up his third foul. Hefner's in there because they think we're playing some kind of zone. They haven't recognized what we're playing, but they're going to try to get shots for him. Allen makes both free throws. Great three point shooter, actually. 10 point deficit for Auburn. AM ball, 12 45 in the second. Radford walks it across midcourt. Bounce pass, high post, Coleman. Puts it on the floor, kicks it into the corner, and right through the hands of Aiden Hefner yeah, they're into gonna the try to, bench. They're going to try to get Hefner shots because we're, they think we're playing a zone, but I don't think we are. I think we're playing a matchup kind of. All right, Auburn ball trails by 10. Moore, Donaldson, KD, Cardwell, and Flanagan. The Auburn five. Down by 10. Donaldson. Leaves for KD, top of the circle, four more to KD, penetrates, kicks it to the corner. Allen Flanagan, three, short, rebound KD. Double teamed along the baseline, throws it away, steal by Radford. Cover Donaldson is back, Radford, Euro step, loses it, gets it to Hefner, and he puts it now in. We had two guys that didn't get back at all in, and they beat us down the floor. They deserved that basket. 12-point lead for Texas A&M with 12.05 in the second half. 55-43, Texas A&M. Donaldson, Moore, left wing KD, underneath for Cardwell and an offensive foul against Dillon trying to clear out Hayden Hefner. Well, we did the thing we got to do, quick ball reversal and get it inside or get it up, but we we'd actually fouled on the play. 11.56 to go in the second half. Texas A&M holds on to a 12-point lead, 55-43 at Neville Arena, and this is the Auburn Sports Network. AuburnTigers.com is the official website of Auburn Athletics. Read the latest feature stories on your favorite Tiger teams. Get critical game day info. Search videos and audio. Find how to get connected through social and digital media or by joining Tigers Unlimited. Shop the AU Photo Store or just find the next event on the athletic calendar. Plus, all athletics broadcasts are streamed free at AuburnTigers.com slash watch. AuburnTigers.com, the official online home of Auburn Athletics. This just in, Auburn Bank has completed their 114th year of serving their community. This next one goes out to Auburn Bank, champions of you. Touchdown, Auburn Bank. The champions of you are 114-0. 
Welcome to Auburn Bank. How can we help? I hear y'all are undefeated. Helping you achieve your financial goals is our goal. Visit championsofyou.com to see how we can serve you. Auburn Bank, champions of you. Member FDIC. Southern homes are particularly vulnerable to termites. In this climate, you need guaranteed protection. You need Cook's Pest Control and Centricon. Termites attack the Centricon stations, exposing themselves to an agent that eliminates their entire colony. Upgrade from old-fashioned liquid service to the proven protection of Centricon and Cook's Pest Control. Call Cook's today for a free evaluation. Looky, 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 here comes Cookie, Cook's Pest Control. Brad Law back at Neville Arena checking the Yellowwood scoreboard. Mississippi State clings to a lead in Tuscaloosa. Bulldogs down to a five-point edge now, 46-41 with 12 minutes to go. And they're in immediate timeout there as well. Elsewhere outside the top 25 in the SEC tonight in the ACC, Louisville and Boston College are all tied at 48. Midway through the second half up in Boston, Louisville is winless in eight tries in ACC action. And it's Indiana with a lead at Minnesota. Hoosiers on top of the Golden Gophers with 11 and a half to go, 47-42. The only other game that is yet to get underway tonight across college basketball will start in about 30 minutes in San Diego, San Diego State, and Utah State in Mountain West Conference action. Here, Auburn trails Texas A&M 55-43. 11.56 to go as we send it back to the voice of the Tigers and the Hall of Fame coach, Andy Burcham and Sonny Smith. Second half tonight, Auburn is 5 of 12 from the field of 41.7%. A&M, 3 of 11 from the field at 27.3%. Auburn trailed by as much as 15 at the half. Auburn has had the lead down to 9 in the second half. Currently, A&M leads Auburn by 12. And A&M right now, uh, points in the paint almost even. Auburn 26, yeah. Texas A&M 22. Well, we're playing better. We're getting better shots. We're getting better looks. We're we're slowing them down a little bit, and we're doing it by they. I don't think they figured out whether we're playing a zone or a man. We're showing zone, playing man, playing showing man, playing zone. And M with four turnovers in the second half. They only had three in the first. They get it underneath to Coleman. Coleman loses it, gets it back, puts it up. It was blocked. The rebound comes out of there to Moore. That's a block for Broom. Yeah, we're defending the post a heck of a lot better. Donaldson. Centers it for the Tigers. Auburn trails by 12, 11, 33 in the second half. Donaldson at the right wing. Between the circles, Moore. Left wing, KD Johnson. Johnson let the left wing. Penetrates to the basket. Loses it. Whistle, foul. It's a charge on KD. Well, that was not a good move. He had made up his mind ahead of time what he's going to do. It's a second oh. foul for Auburn the last two yeah. times down the floor for the Tigers offensively. And A.M. knew what he was going to yeah. do. They've scouted this really well. He's going to drive every candy, every chance he gets. So we got to decide something else every once in a while. Fifth foul against Auburn. A&M has been called for six in the second half. Andy, we're showing a 1-1-3 one, one, zone. I don't know that we're playing it, and I don't think Texas A&M knows either. Andre Gordon up the floor for the Aggies. Across midcourt on the right-hand dribble. Drifts off to the left wing. Picked up by Donaldson there. Gets a screen from Marble. Picks it up, throws to Marble in the lane. Penetrates to the hole and scores. We've, we're playing behind. We've got, to keep, we've got to keep them out of the middle with that wide open passage. 14-point lead for Texas A&M. 10-57 in the second half of play. Right corner, Berman goes baseline, pull up from 12. Good, the Bermanator. Great pass from KD Johnson. Cross court pass with a lot of mustard on it. Auburn trails by 12. 10 43, second half of play. Got to get some stops. Yeah, showing a 1 1 3 zone, but playing man, I believe. Gordon at the right sideline. Gets a screen from Marble, brings it to the point. Right wing for Hefner goes baseline. Now out to the top for Gordon to the free throw line, spins, goes up, and he didn't get it off the glass. Rebound tapped out, though, to Radford. To the right wing, Hefner. He's open for a three. It's missed. Weak side rebound, Berman for Auburn. Go. Outlet KD races up the floor, top of the circle, down the right side of the lane. She goes off the glass and missed it against Hefner. He's determined to beat them off the dribble, and they're, they're waiting at the goal for him with the guy to make it a double team. Rebound to AM. Radford across midcourt with one second to spare. 
Texas A&M by 12, 57-45. Radford, Gordon, back to Radford at the right wing. Outside the arc, inside, back outside near the sideline. Bounce pass, Marble against Broom, six to shoot underneath for Hefner, and a foul on KD. Yeah, we're five showing, on the shot clock. Andy, we're showing zone and playing man, and they didn't recognize it, but Hefner made a great cut. We yeah. all, they had to hit him with the pass. Second foul on KD. Both teams will be shooting free throws the rest of the night upon the next foul for each squad. 20 to shoot for AM. In the corner, Marble to the wing, Garcia. Hands to Radford in front of the AM bench. Top of the circle. Crossover down the lane to the hole. He missed it. Rebound Garcia. One dribble. Head fake. Goes up. Foul against Chris Moore. Auburn not taking care of the defensive glass. And AM that's, making Auburn pay for that. That's a good point. We got to limit them to one shot. We got to rebound with five. We're rebounding with three right now. We need to send all of our perimeter players to the board. AM in the bonus for the rest of the night. 9.30 to go second half. This is a shooting foul. Two shots for Anderson Garcia. First is good. Transfer out of Mississippi State. Had a career high 14 rebounds last year in the SEC tournament against South Carolina. Yeah. AM made a run to the championship game, losing to Tennessee, and then. Some felt they should have made the NCAA tournament, but made it all the way to the finals of the NIT. The way they're playing right now, they might be a good shot to make it because we're playing a very yeah. good team here. And we're not playing bad. AM by 14 again. High post pass, Broom. Faces Marble at the free throw line. Drives on him to the basket. He puts it up. He missed it. Rebound to the floor, AM ball. You, you got to be a man to play under that basket right now. Both teams. Gordon across midcourt for AM. Oh, watch out for a three right here, folks. Yeah, we're back to man basically right now. Gordon at the top. Picked up by Broom and a hedge. Garcia back to Gordon on the wing. Now Radford with eight to shoot. Now here's a guy going to go to his left, but he went right. He has an open three, and he missed it. Rebound KD. On the break for the Tigers across midcourt to Wendell. Skip pass in the corner, sent out of bounds by Garcia with 25 to shoot. Well, we're certainly looking for the open man. We're certainly running with the basketball. Texas a and is doing a tremendous job of getting back on defense, so. Jalen Williams in and Chris Moore out. Chris has played the four tonight for the Tigers since coming back from that shoulder injury. We need him. He, he can play the game. Auburn down 14 with the basketball. 8.39 in the second half. Wendell Green between the circles to the left wing for Berman. Lior hands or picks up the dribble, hands to Green, penetrates to the hole, drives, shoots, scores. And he got fouled. He's tremendous at second chance. He shows you the ball, takes it away from you, and then puts it in the basket. Ten points on the night for Wendell Green. Auburn within 12. 8-15, second half. Marble from 15 at the free throw line. Missed it. Rebound to Wendell. Up the middle of the floor across midcourt. Working against Coleman. Double teamed against Coleman. Foul. Oh, lead. they finally call one. They called a foul on uh, number zero, Dexter Dennis, and that's his fourth. Right. Was it Dennis? Zero? That's his fourth. Well, they're definitely they they're definitely fouling us, and they've started calling it. I don't I don't know what brought that on. AM does not have a field goal in its last three minutes, and yet Auburn just not able to quite get the comeback in motion, although. These two free throws by Wendell could bring the lead back to 10. What, what's happened is they can't recognize what defense we're in. We've done a good job of, of, of not showing one defense and playing another down that, here. That's at the defensive end. The offensive end haven't taken advantage enough oh, in the second we're half. We're not doing that, yeah. that's for sure. Still time to do it, though. you got to give to them go. credit. Their defense is really solid also. Agreed. Wendell at the line. This is a one in bonus for Wendell Green, Jr. First is good. Auburn basketball brought to you in part by Ford. Check out the Ford F-150 at your local Ford dealer. F-150, the official truck of the Auburn Tigers. Dead ball points, stops on defense, going to be critical right now. We can't let them have second chances either. No, none. That's a good point. 8.05, second half. Wendell can cut the lead to 10. Yes. Uh, we might press a little right here. That's exactly the case, and AM wants to bring in 
Their starting point guard, Wade Taylor, the fourth. Their leading scorer coming in at 14.8 points a game. All right, now they've got a guy behind us. We've got to be aware of that. Taylor has 11 on the night. The big night, Radford, Tyrese Radford with 21 points. Still showing zone. They don't, they, they, they don't know what we're playing. 10-point game, A&M ball. Taylor, right wing Radford. Brings it to the hash, now brings it to the top. 15 to shoot. Gets a screen. Picked up by KD, who recovers. Free throw line, Marble. Underneath, knocked away by Berman. Ball is loose and out of bounds off of A&M, Auburn basketball. That was a great denial. We're playing some solid defense right now. Leor Berman was, uh, Berman was really tough on that. I'll get his name right if he keeps playing like that. Time out on the floor, Auburn ball when we come back. 7.40 to go. Texas A&M 59, Auburn 49. Auburn basketball continues in a moment. This is the moment you've been waiting for. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our home. When you step onto the court and into the spotlight, the moment to show that hard work and long days pay off. Because when that final shot leaves your hands and we leave our seats, that powerful moment connects us all. Alabama Power is a proud supporter of the Auburn Tigers. Power for a better Alabama. Hey, Tiger fans, this is Andy Burcham. The Auburn experience, you know it. There's nothing else like it. It's what binds us together as the Auburn family. And when you give to Auburn, you build on a strong foundation. Your gift opens doors of opportunity for top students, recruits exceptional faculty, and fuels innovative research. This is what creates our unique Auburn experience. And your gift makes it possible today and for generations to come. Give today at auburngiving.org. Southern homes are particularly vulnerable to termites. In this climate, you need guaranteed protection. You need Cook's Pest Control and Centricon. Termites attack the Centricon stations, exposing themselves to an agent that eliminates their entire colony. Upgrade from old-fashioned liquid service to the proven protection of Centricon and Cook's Pest Control. Call Cook's today for a free evaluation. Looky, 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 here comes Cookie, Cook's Pest Control. A look at the defensive statistics is brought to you by Cook's Pest Control and Centricon. You don't have to live with termites. Well, if you thought that this was going to be a three-point shooting fest in the game, well, it was in the first half. It is not in the second half. Auburn is 0 of 4 from 3 in the second half. And AM, which hit seven threes in the first oh, half, yeah. or excuse me, six in the first half, only has one in the second half. We welcome you back to Neville Arena, 7.40 to go. In the second half, Auburn trails by 10. Auburn ball coming out of the timeout. A reminder to you, race week is almost here for the second annual War Eagle Run Fest. Fly down the field, finish on the 50-yard line for the half marathon, 5K, or the kids' mile. Go to WarEagleRunFest.com. That's War Eagle Fest Run. Let me try that again. War Eagle Run Fest. War Eagle Run to sign up. You know, the thing that's helping us right now is their inability to recognize what defense we're in. So they just started kind of playing one-on-one -on -one and trying to drive the ball, and we defended it extremely well. Now, if we can get something going offensively, they might be hurting a little bit. Auburn ball coming out of the timeout break, 7.40 to go in the second half. Let's see who Auburn sends on the floor. Jalen Williams, Leor Berman. Wendell Green Jr., KD Johnson, and Janai Broom. Green and Broom in double figures, 13 for Janai, 12 for Wendell. Leading score in the game is Tyrese Radford with 21 in the contest, 11 for Wade Taylor, the fourth. Well, that's their two guys. Yes, it is. They're great players. Auburn ball, 736, second half, Tigers down 10. Wendell at the right wing, drives past Radford. Wrap around for Broom, who just All loses right. the ball. Out of bounds. If he has it, it's a dunk oh, and it's yeah. an eight point game. That he was just, a hard pass. He just didn't put a handle on it. No, got he should have got it. Mm. All right, we got to have a stop after missing a layup right there. We got to have a stop. We're still showing, we're playing man now. You got the play you wanted and just didn't finish it. Taylor inside the arc, left wing to Radford, top of the circle. 16 to shoot, left wing Taylor. Picked up by Wendell Green. 
13 to shoot. Drives down the lane against Broom and scores. Yeah, that's a, just a great play. We, we defended it pretty well, but he wants to go to his right, and he's so good he got to his right. we got to turn him back to his left. Under seven minutes to go in the second half, and Auburn trails by 12 again. 61-49. Wendell, top of the circle for Jalen. Williams down to the baseline right for KD. 18-footer. Nope, rebound Taylor. Got nothing going down for us right now. They lead by 12 and have the basketball with 6.38 on the counting clock in the second half. They're in no hurry right now. No, that's the way they play. Taylor with 14 to shoot. KD comes out on him. Taylor gets a screen from Marble. Into the corner, three ball, Dennis. No. Rebound, tap to the floor, Berman. Ahead, KD. Auburn Give two on up. one. KD to the hole of the basket. Yes. And a foul on the play. KD Johnson. Woo! For the and one, he was in the cylinder. He was in the half moon down there, thankfully. And you know, a chance for a three-point play for KD Johnson. I thought if we could ever get this thing in a full-court game that they couldn't play with us, and now we're doing that just a little bit, and we're scoring points off our defense. That was a score off of a great defense. KD with four points on the night. He's at the free throw line. The foul went against Taylor. That is his fourth. And he will come out, and Andre Gordon is in. Let's get this under single fig figures and get going again. He can cut the lead to nine right here. 61-51, A&M, 6-17 to go, second half. Second half presented by Wing Creek Hotel and Casino with three Alabama locations in Atmore, Montgomery, and Wetumpka. You escape every day at Wind Creek Hotel and Casino and online at windcreek.com. All right, got to have dead ball points and got to get a stop. We got to get this under 10 and keep trucking. KD's free throw cuts the lead to nine. All right, All right. now we're pressing with a two, a, a full court. One, three, one, full court press. In court, bound into the corner for Andre Gordon and he's fouled by KD. And Gordon, a 50% free throw shooter, is at the line for a one and bonus. Yeah, KD's all or nothing. He was going for a <laughs> steal, right. and he didn't get it. But you, you, you got to love his effort. He gives you great effort. That is KD's third foul of the night. Auburn little trails by nine with 6.16 to go, and Gordon is at the line. Outstanding quarterback in Sydney, Ohio, in addition to his basketball yeah, he work. hadn't shot well here. I hope he keeps it up. He missed the free throw, the rebound to Broom. Now Wendell Green up the floor. Auburn down nine, six ten to go. Wendell across midcourt, left wing just dribbled the ball away. Get there quick. Gordon on the break for AM. Dribbles off the left side, wisely brings it out on the wing. Oh, boy. That was a bad turnover right there. Unforced. Marble at the top, it's Radford. Picked up by Wendell Green, almost at midcourt. 13 to shoot. Radford picked up by Green. Now picked up by Broom in the switch. Radford down the right side of the lane, lobs it up there and scores with a foul in the play against oh. Wendell Green. Really a good play by Tyrese Radford. Well, what it is is an isolation situation where they're trying to take advantage of the height. They, they had a taller guy going against a smaller guy, and it worked that time. But we got to give help down there to make sure that doesn't happen. Radford with a... 23 points tonight. His career high was 25 at SMU when he played at Wichita State. Uh, he's a heck of a player. Agreed. He can make it a 12-point game, and he does. Yeah, he's a good free throw shooter to go along with his other problems, uh, the other assets, I guess we should say. 12-point lead for AM with 5.36 to go, second half. Wendell. Flanagan from Williams underneath for Broom. Chennai to the hole, and it's going to be we'll a take uh, those kind. basket interference on Andre Gordon. Cuts the lead back to 10 with 5.28 to go in the second half. All right, now we're going to get after them and see what we can do from a press. We'll front them. It looks like we're playing a pressing zone type of press. Wade Taylor with four fouls will come back in, replacing Gordon at the point. It may be man for man. Auburn has been as close as nine in this second half, right? They haven't been closer than nine. A&M basketball, 5.28 to go, 10-point lead. Inbound to Radford. He drives to the lane, to the right wing. Dennis back to the top for Taylor. Both Dennis and Taylor 
with four fouls apiece. Got to have a stop. 19 to shoot, 5-16 to go. 10-point lead, a &M. They get it to Radford. He will yeah. go one-on-one -on -one against Allen Flanagan. Shot clock at 10. There's the screen from Marble. He goes left, he drives to the hole, he puts it up and scores. You let him go to the left, he's one of the best in this league. Auburn hasn't stopped him tonight. A career high 26 points on the night for Radford. And AM back up by 12, 66 54, 450 to go. Wendell Green drives to the basket, leans in, goes up for the shot, and stops the clock with 446 to go. He was fouled by Marble. It will be the second foul on Marble. And Wendell Green back at the line to shoot two for Auburn. Wendell Green might be as good as anybody in the Southeastern Conference at going to the basket and getting fouled. Well, no one has more free throws made than Wendell coming into tonight with 92. Has three more tonight, so that's 95 free throws made this season for Wendell Green Jr. Make it 96. You know, and another thing you can't measure, but you sure can see is his effort. Yeah. He's a great effort player. Zep Jasper in replacing KD Johnson. This is Auburn's five, starting five, Green, Jasper, Flanagan, Williams, Broom. We can't let them throw, yeah. jump out and throw this thing wrong. Wendell oh, tries wrong. to cut the lead back to 10. They were in the lane early, didn't matter, he made the free throw. a and ball full length of the floor to go, full court pressure by Auburn. Taylor into the corner for Dennis, double teamed. Dennis lobs it ahead to Taylor. Across midcourt for Radford. And Radford will center it now. 10 point game, a and ball, five, 4.30 to go second half. They will just let the clock run down and let Radford go one on one. He gets a double team, gets it off the left side. Marble penetrates, drives, put it up, missed it, rebound again, a and &M. Underneath, ball is lost. Out to the top it comes for Taylor. And the shot clock did not reset after the first shot. Yeah, that's... Oh, it did reset, and they did not draw iron. That's what Brad Law, our producer. We got hurt on that. We might have had a steal right there. Well... What are they th talking about? The shot about? clock reset. But I don't think the ball ever hit the rim. And we've got a timeout with 4.16 to go and they will discuss the shot clock at this point. AM 66, Auburn 56, 4.16 to go in the second half. AM ball when we return, and this is the Auburn Sports Network. Follow the action all season as Auburn Women's Basketball rebuilds a championship foundation inside Neville Arena and throughout the SEC. Coach Johnny Harris and staff have a young and talented roster, and every game promises fast paced competition. Games are available in the Auburn area on FM Talk 93.9 FM and everywhere else by downloading the Auburn Game Day app. Check the schedule at auburntigers.com and tune in all season long for Auburn women's basketball. Most creatures blend in with their natural surroundings. However, one North American beaver colony is doing anything but. This group, having discovered new yellowwood protector, semi-transparent stain and water repellent, has coated their lodge in a lovely smoky gray color. Modern look and powerful protection, backed by the yellow tag. Well done. Introducing the first stain worthy of the yellow tag. Yellowwood protector, semi-transparent stain and water repellent. Find a dealer near you. Game day is full of ifs. Like if Auburn has another kick six up his sleeve. Who knows? But if you want the most convenient way to pay on the planes, get the Auburn University Regents Visa Debit Card. Tap to pay contactless card technology and lock it card controls give you what you need on game day or any day. To order your card, visit regents.com slash go tigers. Regents, official bank of the SEC, member FDIC. Terms and conditions apply. Brad Law at Neville Arena as we check the Yellowwood scoreboard in Tuscaloosa. Predictably, Alabama has assumed control in the second half. Second-ranked Crimson Tide now leads Mississippi State 61-55. They have three and a half minutes to go in that matchup. 
Outside the SEC tonight, it is Minnesota catapulting in front of Indiana. Golden Gophers 57-56, the advantage with two minutes left in Big Ten play. In the Big East, it's Creighton big over St. John's 91-64 with less than four minutes to go. Boston College leads Louisville 64-61 with three minutes to go up in Boston. And for some reason, Stanford is hosting Chicago State and it's Chicago State with the lead. Five and 16, Chicago State leads Stanford at halftime in Palo Alto, 41 was good. to 34 as we send it back. Thank you, Coach. As we send it back to Andy Bertram and Sonny Smith. He wasn't talking about you. <laughs> he never is. He was talking about Malik Dunbar. I was talking out of turns what I was doing. <laughs> well, that's true as well. <laughs> Malik Dunbar back at Auburn as the celebrity end. Tonight, perhaps he can bring some magic back the shot clock has been reset to 16 right now with 4.16 to go in the second half. AM ball, Auburn trails by 10 in the second half. Tyrese Radford, who hit five threes against Auburn a year ago at the SEC tournament, has picked up where he left off then. A career high 26 points tonight for the Baton Rouge, Louisiana native, a transfer from Virginia Tech. 26 yep. points, a career high for Garcia, or rather Radford, who was eight of 16 from the field. Well, when you have a guy that big playing the point, he's a very difficult matchup. And he gets to the goal, if you if you stop him, he gives it up to somebody. So he's really a heck of a player. It was a timing error, 4.16 to go in the half, and 16 on the shot clock for AM, and Auburn trails by 10. Into the backcourt for Tyrese Radford. Well, they're going to take about a day for the yeah. shoot. We got to make them. They will give him it. a high post screen and let him go one on one. Oh, he lost it into the backcourt. It was touched by Auburn. Shot clock at five. Radford inside the arc, pops a three and missed it. And the rebound out of bounds off of AM. Auburn ball with 3.58 to go. What. You well, better have a good insurance to play another boy, basket right now. I forgot a pretty good bad. look at that one. Auburn down 10 with the ball, 357. Second half, Auburn can't take too much time here. Green at the wing, picks up the dribble, bounce pass inside the arc to Jalen Williams. Left corner, Flanagan goes baseline. Double team there, out to the top, Jalen. Right wing for Wendell, inside the arc from 18. Missed Ooh. it, rebound Jalen. Lost it, foul. I tell you, if we can get second shots or make shots right now, we'll be in business. But Jalen looks a little tentative to shoot the ball tonight, doesn't he? Yeah. He's passed up some shots, he's but a he's better. at the line for a two right here. Auburn Andy, in the double bonus. Yeah, he's a better catch and shoot player than he is a driver in his mind, I think. I'd like to see him take that ball on a dribble and take it to the goal. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification of the Auburn Sports Network. As you can tell, Jalen cut the lead to nine. He can cut it to eight, and he does. All right, get a stop. 338, this is as close as Auburn has been. 338 to go, AM by eight. Taylor up the floor for the fighting Texas Aggies across midcourt, and he throws it out of bounds. I'm not sure who he was going to, and yep. there's a stop. Got to take have a advantage, basket. yeah. Got to have a basket right or, now. Or a basket and a foul or a stoppage of play. I'll take both. Got to have points here, Sonny. Points, points. And Wendell Green will bring it up the floor. Picks it up, spins past Dennis. Across midcourt, 26 to shoot. Drives to the hole, hangs, put it up, Ooh, didn't get it. Almost. And AM gets the rebound. Gordon across midcourt to the left wing for Dennis. Now to the top for Radford and a foul on Flanagan. Don't think Auburn wanted that foul right no, there. No, and all the effort we were putting out, we yeah. didn't need a cheap foul. And you're putting an outstanding free throw shooter at the line for two now. Boy, boy, 80. a couple chances Auburn has had the ball with momentum. And I think of the, the driving play to Janai Broom after a timeout and he fumbled it out of bounds. That basket or that attempted 
basket by Wendell, and Radford makes the free throw. Yeah, Boy. you don't want him up there shooting 80%. I don't want him anywhere. I wish he'd transfer. I don't think he's going to. He's eight of nine from the line tonight. He missed his first free throw. He's made eight in a row since. Heck of a player. And he makes it a 10-point game. Auburn had a chance to cut the lead under eight. Didn't do so. Radford got fouled and went to the line and made two, and it's a 10-point game again. Yeah, when you get in under five and he has the ball all the time, he's a hard man to foul, too. Green across midcourt, top of the circle, penetrates. Looking underneath, out to the top for Jalen. Leaves for Wendell. 18 to shoot, 16 to shoot. Ooh, right corner, Williams. Low post, Janai. Fouled. He'll go to the line for two. Stops yep. the clock with 2.52 to go. They're playing behind the post. We throw it in there, I think we can get something good. Coleman called for his third foul. Stops the clock with 2.52 to go and puts Janai Broom at the line for two. Janai was who Auburn went to early when Auburn built up that eight-point lead very early in the night. A&M's done a nice job since then, but Janai has 15 points and seven rebounds. Get that thing under 10, get a steal, get going here. First free throw is good for Janai Broom. 69 career double-digit scoring games in the career of Janai Broom. He's been a great addition. Boy, to hasn't program. he, though. He's averaged 14.6 points a game in SEC play. He's at 16 tonight. And he'll block your shot in a second. Seven blocks on the night for Janai. Second free throw is missed. Foul on the play. It's going to go against Auburn on the rebounds up Jasper. That, that I think he was called for holding that was actually on the rebound. Yeah. And they're at the free throw line for two. With 2.52 to go. Boy, there have been hints and teases of the comeback. It just hasn't happened thus far. It's and harder. now Andre Gordon at the line for two for AM. It's harder to come back on a, a ball control team than it is a team that plays up and down and plays free. Gordon's free throw is good. Especially when you got good free throw shooters on the guys that are handling the basketball. And I'm by 10, 69-59 with 2.52 to go. Make it 11 as Gordon knocks home both. He's the one guy you'd think you'd want to foul. He's it's a good free throw shooting team in AM, and they've shown yeah. it again tonight. Yeah. They're 15 of 18 from the line. Wendell Green lobs for Broom. Ooh. It hit the back of the rim, though. A little bit too high. Yeah, a little bit too high in the alley oop, and AM gets the rebound. Up the floor, Coleman fouled by Janai, and Coleman will go to the line to shoot two more. 2.36 to go in the second half, and we have a, up. Oh, that's it. They're going to look at this one probably. Well, I, I think it's a five foul. Or are they going to look at the. They're going to look at where it's flagrant. I, I, they're going to look to see if there was a shot to the face. Oh yeah. Coleman held his, his cheek after the foul, and they're going to look and make sure that it well, that's, oh, was indeed a flagrant. We hit him about three different places, so they can look a lot. They'll find a lot of things. That's a foul. No one gets you closer to college basketball than Sirius XM. Download the Sirius XM app and take your Auburn Tigers with you all season long. Tune in to Sirius XM SEC Radio for news, talk, analysis, and more. Straight from your car. That's straight from your phone. No car required. 2.36 to go in the second half. AM leads Auburn 70 to 59. It's an AM team that is holding opponents to 66 points a ball game. Yeah, they do and it a lot with their offense. It is not slowing, a flagrant. By and slowing so the game down to what they do and playing with it as long as they do, bringing it up slowly. Coleman will go to the line for two. They're a team you don't want to play if they got the lead. Auburn just hasn't had an answer for Tyrese Redford. Oh, who, who does? 28 points, a career high on the night. He has nine rebounds as well. You, you'd have to put us in the, in the category of being a really a good defensive team. And yet he is just, yep. he's made us look bad. Coleman gets a couple here for A&M. And he missed the first. Auburn's deficit is 11 with 2.36 to go in the second half. 
Well, he shoots 66. I don't want him to improve on that. And he got the second one to fall, and it's a 12-point lead yeah, for Texas they're pressing, a they're pressing a little bit slow. Let's take time off the clock. Wendell across midcourt. Auburn does not have a three-pointer in the second half. Jalen, low post broom to the hole and a double team. Goes up, it was blocked. Rebound, Coleman fouled by Janai, a frustration foul on Janai Broom. Did we want that? Yes, we did, I guess. And Coleman goes back to the stripe for two for Texas A&M. Auburn, three of 15 from the three-point stripe tonight. Only made three against South Carolina on Saturday. It didn't matter. Auburn just dominated play underneath. Yeah, you in say, that game. why you want to foul him? Maybe he shoots 66%. That's why. And also, you got to foul him because he's the guy with the ball. Free throw is good. 2.22 to go in the second half. Texas A&M leads Auburn by 13 points, 72-59. And Auburn calls a timeout. Texas A&M leads Auburn by 13 points, 72-59, 2.22 to go. Coleman with another free throw when we come back as Auburn basketball continues in a moment. War Eagle, a tradition that can mean hello or goodbye. It's our battle cry, our family. It's what Auburn is all about. Ford Motor Company has a powerful tradition too. An unwavering commitment to build smarter, tougher, more dependable trucks. Ford F-150, it's a truck I drive and the official truck of the Auburn Tigers. Visit buyfordnow.com or your local Ford dealer. Tell them Coach Pearl sent you. Not all models, trims, or features may be available. Contact your dealer for more information. We've all fallen into boring routines. We just keep doing what has to get done. Isn't it time to escape the old routine and make time for yourself? Make time to go out with old friends. Make time to add excitement back into your life. Make time to feel like a winner again. Life is more fun when you live it. So what are you waiting for? Escape every day at Wind Creek Casino and WindCreekCasino.com. In SEC Sports, the ifs come at you every minute. What if your QB had released the ball a second earlier? What if the head coach hadn't used his last time out? What if your team goes all the way this season? If you love the tradition, if you live for the rivalry, if you can't wait each week for the absolute edge of your seat action, Regions is right there with you as the official bank of the SEC. Regions can't help you with the ifs and sports. Regions helps you embrace the ifs in life. Member FDIC. Keep it here after the game for the Regions Bank Post Game Show with final stats and analysis, plus comments from Coach Pearl. Now back to the game. Welcome back to Neville Arena. Tigers with some work to do, trailing by 13 points with 222 to go. There have been times where you would see this Auburn team make the comeback, but if, well, oh. if, if Auburn is unable to come back in this one, this would be Auburn's fourth loss, and there has been a common denominator in all four of those games. An outstanding guard had an outstanding night. Memphis, USC, Georgia, and tonight, Tyrese Radford for Texas A&M. Yeah, and a lot of times it might not just be the guard, it might be the size of the guard. You Radford know, that, is 6'2". That's, that, that's what we're, we're looking at, a pretty big guard here. And he's done it everywhere tonight. Oh, he has. Radford, a career high, 28 points, 8 of 17 from the field, three three-pointers, 9 of 10 from the line, and is one rebound away from a double-double. Yeah, now we're putting them on the free throw line because we have to. They don't, they're not the kind of team that gets to the free throw line on their own because they move the ball around so slowly. Let me put it, this would be a career high, this would be an a A&M career high for Radford. I, I apologize. He had 31 points at DePaul when he was playing at Wichita State. Coleman at the free throw line, second of two free throws. And he makes it. And that's another thing that A&M has done well tonight is and it's a good free throw shooting team. And Texas A&M tonight is 18 of 22 from the charity strike. 14 point lead, 219 to go second half. Wendell Green picks up the dribble at the top of the circle. Bounce pass to Zepp Jasper. Down the left side. 
Outside the arc to Wendell at the sideline. Gets a screen. Wendell at the top. Skip pass into the corner. Jalen Williams. Head fake. Shoots the three. Missed it. Weak side rebound out of bounds off of AM. Auburn ball oh, Auburn with two ball. minutes to go, down 14 points. We're having to work too long to get a shot, and it's not because we want to. They're defending so well. Out of bounds, baseline right. Williams will trigger. 20 to shoot. Inbound Flanagan. Green at the top. Broom underneath. Jalen off the glass. It's good. Jalen very good around the basket. If you can get him the ball on a pass, instead of making him make it off the dribble, he is outstanding. Before him, yeah. he's 80 percenter. Wendell picks up his fourth foul, and Radford will go to the line to shoot a couple. 28 points tonight for Radford. A career high 31 at DePaul back in uh, November of this year. Free throw is good. He's a he's a very good player. He can he, he, he missed dead his ball points. Yeah, he missed his first free throw. He's made his next ten. He he's good from the free throw line on dead balls. He's good at handling the basketball. And I've watched him on the other end. He's a very good defender. Now, makes both makes both free throws. A and M by 14 again with a minute 23 to go. Williams between the circles to the right sideline for Flanagan. Allen to the low post for Broom where he's double teamed. Loops a pass to Wendell on the left wing. 13 to shoot. And he draws a foul. He'll go to the line for three. The foul he's goes very, against Dexter Dennis and that's his fifth. He's very good at that. What happens right now is they're not sinking to help side. They're just they're just fronting everybody and up guarding them. So you're not, you can't reverse the ball and get much right now. Couldn't have started much better for Auburn tonight. The Tigers outscored AM in the first three and a half minutes, 10 to 2. But Texas AM has uh, taken control of the game since that point, led by 15 yeah. at the half. Auburn has been as close as eight here in the second half, but that is all that Auburn has been able to do. Wendell makes the first free throw. They scored, they scored out of their half court offense. Wendell they misses scored the on second. dead ball points. Yep. Wendell missed the second free throw. Taylor in, Garcia out. Well, I said that was the fourth foul on Dennis. He's still out there, isn't he? Somebody just went out with, as Garcia, I believe. Got to hit these free throws. Wendell gets two of three. Right. 12 get, point lead for AM with a minute 10 to go. Yeah, we. we we just try to get the steal. I don't think Fallon's going to catch you much, help you much. Inbound, Dennis, right back to Taylor up the floor for AM across midcourt. Centers it and brings it out near midcourt. One minute to go. AM leads Auburn by 12, 75 63. If you're going to foul, you do it now. If you're not, you got to play your string out defensively. Taylor in the center circle, shot clock down to nine. Taylor double team, low post for Coleman. He lost it. Ball is loose. Gets it back and scores with four seconds on the shot clock. And that'll put a capper on the night for Texas A&M. Wendell Green Jr. underneath with a fadeaway from about eight. It's an air ball. Rebound picked up by Taylor. Uh, he didn't need that shot. Yeah. He's just wanting to catch up so bad. Half minute to go in this one. A&M leads Auburn by 14 points. This will be a convincing win it for be. Texas A&M tonight. And Auburn still goes to... College Station coming up next month. 17 seconds to go in the ball game. Taylor just dribbling this one away for AM. They will either have to shoot it or turn it over. Shot clock is down to six. Taylor around Broom, penetrates into the lane, puts it up, and he scores with one on the shot clock. And Auburn will inbound it. This one comes to a close. And Texas AM comes to Auburn tonight. Texas A&M beats Auburn by a score of 79 to 63. A&M took control of this game at about the four minute, about four minutes into the ball game tonight. After they trailed 10-2, they did not panic. They took control at that point and never relinquished control for the rest of the night. Led by 15 at the half and win by 16 tonight. Auburn's leading score was 16 apiece. Janai Broom and Wendell Green Jr. And you can score points, too, with the Chick-fil-A app. Download or open the app to place an order. Earn and redeem points with the Chick-fil-A app. War Eagle and eat more chicken. 
Final score tonight as the longest winning streak in the country comes to a close at 28 straight games. Texas A&M 79, Auburn 63. Stay tuned.